I'm here. I'm just uh, currently setting up the um, live stream. So anybody waiting, just give me a quick sec. I'm just setting this up. All right, that should set me up here. Let me see, Timothy Lang. Oh, no problem, Timothy. Thank you for showing up. Appreciate that. All right. Just still set things up here for anyone watching. I'm trying to get uh, all my links set up. set up here I'm gonna recall this. Um, I did a trip about halfway up the Arctic. Um, actually, I might I might finish the Arctic. What am I doing? 300 knots, 300 knots. Uh, you're talking five miles a minute. We're oh, what's that? That's 25. So that's five minutes. I need to start descending here. Let's go ahead and descend. Um, so you know, oh, I need to work on this. Um, I'm gonna have to do some sort of gradular VSI here. on the uh, pit a little bit there but um, yeah so kind of the goal I'm working on here is I'm, I'm looking at a new series that's going to be um, all about was used in Stormlink and doing some uh, airline stuff and so working on this airline I've been working on it for a few days now just kind of finally starting to get the operational stuff in uh, flies really well all that just need to get panels banged in and stuff like that uh, currently Working on VSI stuff, which, you know, the game distances are comically short. Like, for example, we're like 110 kilometers from the arid biome up to the Arctic. Uh, those are our most extreme distances, and we're talking, let's say, one, let's say most uh, is 120 kilometers. So you're talking about half of that. I'm sorry, I just need about 60 uh, nautical miles. We're doing 300 knots. We're five miles a minute, you know. So, um, you know, you're talking, um, well, that'd be uh, 12 minutes, something like that, for up to the Arctic. Um, yeah, yeah, 12 minutes up to the Arctic. So it's ridiculously short distances. So, like, I still want to be able to go up to 30,000 feet. So I'm doing excessive climb and descent rates. Like, I'm doing 80 feet per second. That's 4,800 feet per minute uh, descent rate. That's extreme. Um, but in-game it works out. So like right now I'm about, oh, I don't know, 15 nautical miles. I'm only three minutes away from that waypoint and I have to descend down 20,000 feet, you know, to put it into perspective. So I'm going to go ahead and slow down. I need to start getting slowed down. Uh, you want to go less than 250 knots below um, 10,000 feet, so I'm getting ready for that. I'm going to go ahead and slow down. I could also put my spoilers in, but uh, I'm not really needing to do that yet. We're getting close to 10, so I'm going to start slowing down for 250. Flaps are, flaps are all set up. Spoilers are working well. Gears set up. Um, a lot of panel work to be done, but I should be able to bang that in pretty quick. Uh, autopilot is in, as you can see. Uh, bearing panel needs to go in. All these p panels then need to be uh, worked. Throttles are easy. I just need to plug them into the throttle um, controller. Proteus, but... Um, and then paint. So, it's actually not too far off of being done. So, we're currently five... Uh, 
five nautical miles out from that waypoint. We're now going slower, so we're going, uh, yeah, we're going about uh, four miles a minute. And so we're currently looking at about, oh, I don't know, let's say 12 miles. You know, so we're talking three minutes to that waypoint. We're descending down to 4,000 feet per minute. So we're going to be right on the money at that waypoint. And that waypoint is right here. So we're actually planned out pretty well. This is how you plan. You have to constantly do time, time distance calculations, descents, all that good stuff. So that's what I'm doing. You're just uh, working all my calculations essentially so that uh, this works out well so that I can uh, easily descend in there and um, so you know uh, one of the things I'm doing is I'm working you know I wanted to get up to at least 30,000 feet for a trip to the Arctic so I had to kind of play with my v vertical speed to be able to do that so that's kind of set in there I'm still trying to decide if I want to manually do my vertical speed here. I kind of do, but I kind of don't. I'm also thinking of doing autopilot up top and putting more stuff up here. I haven't decided yet, so because the dash is looking a little bit flat. Changed my um, FOV on my character uh, to be a little bit more realistic because this is how, you know, you sit this close to the panel as it is. And so with a standard 70 degree FOV, it's just not enough FOV to see. Let's go over to uh, 340 here. All right, so we're coming through 8,000. We're going to go ahead and I'm gonna start slowing us down here. How far are we? We are 10, so we're about five uh, miles out. Still doing about three um, miles a minute. So I'll be there in about a minute. So all this comes really fast in a jet. You'll see we'll be here in three minutes. That's another three minutes there. So we should be on the ground in six minutes. So we have a lot of stuff to do in that amount of time. Why is this flaky? This this heading's... Okay, so I know why this is... I have to rework the autopilot a little bit. So something I did isn't perfectly going to work. So I have to kind of play with that. All right, so let's go ahead and let's uh, turn this to the end of the runway. So I'm going to keep coming left here. All right, uh, let's get below 250 knots. We are, gear's coming in. Let's go ahead and slow down to 200 knots. All this stuff comes in super fast in a jet. I'm actually gonna put this waypoint at the far end of the runway so it's not blocking my view. Coming down to 200 knots. This is how fast it happens in a jet. Let's go down to 1,000 feet. Okay, everything happens faster in a jet. You're going fast, you have to plan ahead. So there's my airport right there. I'm going to kick this autopilot off in a second here. Um, three, where are we at? I'm trying to see the runway here. Hard to see the runway here, but we'll, we'll be leveling off here in a second. Again, this is an extreme descent rate. Um, you see how kind of robust it is. So I have to kind of play with that. Uh, 320 is our final heading for our runway heading. 320 is coming in. I'm going to bang off the autopilot here. Whoop, whoop, autopilot, autopilot. It's coming off. I'm now manually hand flying it. Let's get slowed down to final approach speed, which is about 120. My flaps are in. Let's go ahead and pull that. Uh, move away. I have to do this quickly. I can't look away too much here. So we should have the airport at 12 o'clock. Do I see it? I do. Runway's in sight. Start slowing down. I need to do some trim here. Just as you do in real life, you need to trim. So see my nose keeps wanting to dip, so I just want to trim until my nose doesn't want to dip anymore. Slowing down to final speed here. All this comes in quickly. So that was about a 12 minute flight from the um, FJ Warner in the arid biome up to Tajin in the Arctic. And we went up to 30,000 feet and we descended, so. Wish we had some more long distance stuff in Stormworks, but we don't. So I'm aiming at the aiming bars here, the two big squares. That's ideally where I'd like my mains to touch down on, so. And here we go, taking off power. All right. And I'm just gonna let it coast for a bit here. There's no point in slowing all the way down. All right, so that was that was a good flight that worked out well. 
So, a lot quicker than I like, you know, but, you know, I like the distances to be realistic in game. I like a couple, like, I don't know, if we had, like, four times the distance on some of these, that would be kind of nice. So if I go and f throttle all the way back, you'll notice my thrust reverses come up. I haven't linked those in. I don't even have brakes connected yet, but, uh... So that was a good test flight. Uh, things I worked on, gear, flaps, all that's working well. So autopilot. So this stuff's coming along really nice, nicely. Let's go ahead and save this up where I'm at here. And right, I'll keep working on it. So uh, gear is in. Let's start working on panels. Um, need to start banging in some panels here. So see how I want to uh, kind of work these. So I'm trying to do them as systems. So if we look at this panel, this is pretty much all elect electronics. We have battery A, B, battery A, B reads. Uh, what is that? That is uh, ground power, battery connection, uh, APU. Those are gens one and two. APU here, what are you? What are these? Um, Anti-ice, good. So anti-ice windshield heat. So that's all fire system. So that's going to be fire system there. So let's see how I want to connect these. So this is going to be, what's this? All APU, I think. What are you? Your bleeds. I think that's bleeds. Fuel crossfeed. So this is fuel section. See, this is the problem is doing them like that. Um, let's see. So try to get this in there, I think. Yeah, let's try to get this in there. So let's go daisy these up. So daisy, daisy. Uh, let's see. We have four. And then I think I did this set here. What did I do? Eight, nine through 12. They set these up yet? Nope. Okay, good. So these are all set up. These are ready to go. So let's make a panel for this. Let's go and get that going. All right, and so one of the reasons I'm not putting them in the wings yet is I have fuel in the wings, so I don't want to get too much of an imbalance until I figure it out. So this is going to be electric panels. All right, electric panels, and let's just walk that out. And we need a read to write. Let's see. Elect panel. And that's an output. Good. Um, so let's look at the panels and see what I need to run on these. So I'll connect them up while I'm here. So I, I, I try to make my panels for my systems. That tends to be a little bit better of a way to do it here. So let's get that in there. And then I need to see what I need. So I need battery buses A, B. Um, I need G ground power. Relay, so I need three relays so far, four relays, um, four relays. That's going to just kick on the gens, so I don't need a relay. F I might relay those. I don't have a generator on those engines yet, so I'll put a generator on those engines. That's so uh, it's at one, two, three four, five, six relays so far, um, seven. Now, I don't really need a relay on this. I just need it to run off, so. All right, so I'll figure out how I want to do that, but we'll get moving on it. So I need battery, two relays at least to start the chain. So let's do that. Relays. I don't want too many relays because I don't have a ton of space for them, so they're going to end up... I don't want them in my fuel tanks. That's kind of the issue, so... Now let's undo those really quick. Ah, let's make them white. They're going to be hidden anyways, so... All right, so first one's going to be... I need to start slamming some batteries in here, so... Let's see. I want my... Two batteries, essentially. Battery A and B... Trying to see, I was hoping I had some more hidden spaces. I think I have nice, back here's hidden spaces, so beautiful. And it's symmetrical, look at that. All right, so there's my two batteries. So we've got battery, 
This is a bat. Trying to come up with a right left scheme as well. That's B bat. All right, so that's A and B bat right there. Nice. All right, A, B, bat. This is going to be master bat. So we have these two here. They're going to go like that. So our batteries tie into our uh, battery connection. So that's good. All right, so let's go back in that panel that I just started here. All right, and we need to connect those relays. So we have, uh, let's see, battery A. So I'm setting this up like it really would be in real life. Battery connect there. All right, so that's kind of done for now. Let's do this should all outputs. Out, out, out. All right, and then zing, zing. All right, good. And let's uh, update that for now, and let's hook them. All right, so we have uh, battery B, battery A, and then the main connection there. Okay, good. So let's see, GPU. Our ground power is going to be another one. I need a lot of relays in this, so I can those spots I just made can fit a ton of relays, so that's good. Uh, let's see, ground power needs a relay. Let's see. Ground power. Okay. And so I'll make the APU. When the APU is on, it will automatically connect its um, gen, so I don't need to do that separately. Then I need Gen 1 and 2 on the engines, which I'll run out off the engine panel, so I don't need to do that separately. All right, so let's start banging this panel together here. Try to make these panels not take too long. So there's 12 total. I don't need all 12, but I'm going to start working. So that's uh, Bat A. That's Bat B. We get Read Read. Then what do I have? GPU is is uh, five. Ground power is five. All right, trying to trying to think of this in my head. Then I think it's bat connect is six. Trying to remember it all six. And then we'll read that to the other um, to the actual PIDs for the uh, engine generators, engine driven generators. So we don't need that. Battery connect is there. So that hooks that system up nicely. Then we need a report. So I need to be able to read. The electrical panel is usually pretty big because of this whole nonsense. So I need a kind of a big electrical panel, which the nice thing is I have a lot of space in my wings. Kind of see if I go into the select tool. That's all. That's the only part of my wing that presently has any microcontrollers in it, and all the wing surface can have microcontrollers in it. So, plenty of room for this. So let's just crank this sucker out so I have some space. I don't probably need all that much, but I'm gonna do it for now. And then I need bat A B. So that's be number input bat A. To be number input bat b okay so bat which it doesn't matter oh uh, it's that b a okay bat a and b inputs there okay good and we'll start writing all right so what are we running we're running um three and four the so three and four are going to be a b's all right, that goes there for now. All right, good. So that's my first writes. Uh, then what do we have? We have those connected. Then I have gens, which will be done later. Then what I have, I have next is going to be APU, which I have to figure out how to stuff an APU in here, which shouldn't be actually too bad. Um, APU is going to be, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, that should be the last panel, so that should be 8, 9, nope. 10, 11, nope. 9, 10, 11, 10. Yep, 9. So that should be 9. So that'll be 9 here for the APU. 9 is going to be APU. 
Okay. Which I probably, I'm going to, no, I'll do it off this panel. That will work. Okay. So I need to run APU start. APU start. Let's go. Um, APU fuel. Uh, I want an APU. I, the problem is I have to make a diesel APU, which is kind of a pain, but um, whatever. APU fuel. APU air. APU clutch. APU clutch. What else do I want to do? Oh, I'll make it complicated. Why not? We'll do it as, we'll do stoichiometry. We don't, no, you know what? I don't want to do stoichiometry. I'm just going to do it simple. It's just a, it's just a bang on easy APU. I don't want to make it too difficult or too complex. It doesn't need to be. All right, so that is all good. Um, start banging this APU together. So there's nine right there. Uh, I just made a stack here. Let me get the whole everything out of here because this is where my spawn area is for my node. So I'm going to move it down just so that they spawn above me here. All right, let's start banging this APU together here. So APU starter. All right, so let's see. If 9 is on, I need RPM. RPS from the APU, APU, RPS, and then that's why I moved it. You see they're all spawned up there now, so I can easily find them. That's kind of my new thing. All right, let's do a PID, as PID is good. PID, APU, RPS. Um, no, we don't want that. Um, let's see, what do we want? We want battery. Yeah, we don't need that. Um, I'm trying to think, do I do direct connect or not? I think we do set RPS and then clutch it. We'll des I'll decide here. Um, let's see. So I want to do... I have my two battery reads. Let me see. Um... Yeah, my two battery. Did I just screw that all up? I did. God damn. That sucks. Um, what? That sucks really badly. Ugh. I just screwed all that up at once. That's awesome. That would really suck. See how fast I can bang it back together. Forgot to update it. Awesome. That's really, really not fun at all. Um. Number input. Okay. Bat B, let's go. Um, All right, that sucks that I had to redo that, but whatever. Let's see, we got some people here. Hey, what's going on there, uh, Tipper? The winner of the uh, Name the Nat competition. All right, let's see. I screwed all this up now, so I got to kind of go back and fix what I screwed up. Um, let's go. This is nine. Let's get this APU working here. Pid.
that A and B I need here. So let's go ahead and do those. And then uh, I'm trying to think where they are. Three and four. Um, okay, that's good for now. All right, and then what I want to run. Um, If those aren't connected, I'm not going to get a positive read on them, so I have to add them. Yep, okay. All right, that's that. Let's see. Um, APU is nine, so nine will turn on the PID. Let's do a. One point five. Try that. Let's go ahead and run that to. Air, and I'm gonna make this simple as for a change. Um, I don't really need stoichiometry. The APU is going to run for all of two seconds. So. All right, so I'm trying to think. I, I don't know if I, you know, I don't need much APU. I generally will run it off the clutch. Uh, let's see. I think I'm going to run it a little bit differently though. So let's go through this and I want this to be either, let's try it this way. Let's clamp it. Um, I want a minimum value of three RPS, maximum value of let's say 15 RPS. That won't scream too hard. Um, let's see, how do I want to do this? I could double pit it or I could just do the clutch and, and not be a, a ding dong. Um, let's see. Do that, and then let's try running a hard clutch. Uh, who knows if this is going to work right? Um, never know. Let's see. So I need starter. Um, do I need the starter here? Starter. So if this is on, and where's uh, the RPS? Did I grab RPS? I did. I thought I did. There it is. RPS. Okay, if RPS is less than, sorry, I'm not in the chat right now. I'm trying to just repair this panel up. I'm trying to get this panel done ASAP. All right. Um, All right, there's our starter. If it starts, I want zero clutch. If it's um, let's do auto clutch this. So if it's greater than, uh, let's see, if RPS is greater than, let's say, uh, what do I want? Three. So this is trying to do an RPM run on this. Um, trying to do an RPS RPM controller on the actual um, APU. I usually do it clutch controller, but we're going to try this. Okay. Get all my lines straight or I'll have an aneurysm. Um, 
All right, let's do not there. All right, and so that's looking good for now. All right, so that hopefully will work the APU. Am I missing any nodes? It does not appear so. Lovely, 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 lovely. Okay. And so we'll keep working on this here. Let's go ahead and oh, screw all that, moving that, but whatever. There we go. All right, good. So let's update that. Actually, update it this time. Let's start plugging. I want to get an APU running pretty quick here. So battery B, battery A. RPS, I have to build the uh, APU first. Let's do modular engine. So I should be able to build one in here um, in the wall there. Let me see. Where is it right? Yeah, the problem is I need to breathe this sucker, and I don't know if I have a breathe place to breathe it. So that will be interesting. Let's see. Uh, do I have a square that I can? Oh, beautiful! Right there. There's my intake. Okay, good. So I, that's fine. Uh, let's go ahead and start building this modular in here. So I need a gen, and a medium gen. I think three across. That's not going to happen. That's fine. And we'll do. I don't need a medium gen. I need a small gen really. go Oop, you're getting short on me aren't you um let's see grab that gen again unfortunately this has to be a diesel apu i'd really rather if they would give us some way to have a jet fuel a apu um like a small turbine or something or just let me run a modular off jet fuel um Doesn't need to be big, it's just topping the batteries while I'm sitting there. Belt drive, where's belty, 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 belty. Okay, good. All right, starter. Where's starter, 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 starter? There you are. Yep, no sickness here on Christmas, mercifully. Is that three cylinder? That's good. Let's see, that's good. We have all of, all of our components. No, I forgot to put clutch in there. So I need a clutch. Okay. There we go. Cut you. I put a clutch in the first one and forgot it on the second one. All right, so the APU doesn't have to be very powerful. I'm just, you know, be using very minimal electricity just to get my engines up and running pretty much. Are my turbines up and running? There we go. Let's see, where can I cut you there, son? That's a two, that's a one. There's my cut there. Good, good, good. Let's see, where are you at there? Um, air. I was going to say, if symmetry's on, we'll cry. So there's my APU intake. All right, so there's air for that. I need a little bit of fuel and the ability to refuel the sucker. So I'm trying to think. I want to do single point refueling, but this is going to be a pain, a single point refuel, because right here is where I'm thinking for single point. Actually, that works. I said, no, it's right in the seats. See, this is the problem. Is I'm, I'm running, I don't have a ton of space here is part of the problem. I didn't make this this little bump out big enough here, so... There's my single point refueling right there. Okay. So for now, um, I should run it right now. Okay, let's see. Where can I run this? There. No. This is where it gets... Oh, excuse me. Camera's been flicking around lately, and it's not fun. Okay, that's going to be a pain to work with. I'll have to figure out uh, that later. It'll be rerouting, but at least I'll have this running for now. Kind of get it up and running is what I want to do. Um, let's see, how do I want to deal with this? 
Don't need a ton of fuel. I think there. Okay, that's where it's going. Hope everybody's having a good Christmas Eve so far. All right, you go there. All right, good. And then we'll try to cut into the wall here. So let's see where are we at here. There it is right there. Okay, good. So I can access there. Again, wish I could do a... a um, really wish I could do a jet fuel uh, APU, but I can't. All right, so that's plugged in. Next is exhaust. And I think I'm going to just do exhaust deletion. I've been doing that more and more. It's just, you know, you got to put cats on there and then it doesn't breathe. So it's kind of like, you know, it's a game limitation. So I don't mind kind of glitching it out a little bit. It doesn't give any performance benefits. And plus it's an APU. It's not a big deal. So that's good. Okay, let's go ahead and start plumbing. Starter. APU air. There, where is fuel? Small gen output, where are you at there? Uh, where are you at? That is not the right one. So let's get the right one here. That is this one. Then that's fuel there. Fuel comes up here. And you are clutch. Oops, this. That is going to be RPS. What do we got there? Bats are in. Okay, good. So that's mostly APU up and running here. Let's see. Uh, it is a jet. It is a uh, twin engine jet. Now, I tend not to make any tanks. Just very little interest in tanks. Just does not do it for me. See this up down counter point zero zero one uh, enabled zero two one. Let's try a point. I don't know point three five to one. Point three five is the reset value. Okay, that should work. All right, let's go ahead and that should run fine. Let's see what else we need. I need I'm trying to think. So I bat A B. Did I connect those? Let me check. I know I deleted a bunch of crap, so... Did I delete all my relays? I bet I did. Nope, they're all set. Okay, good. Let's go ground power. Those are done. What is this? That's bat A, bat B, better connect, bat B, ground power. Ground power is there. All right, and then APU will auto-connect, so that's fine. So APU electric is going to come up to... Where are we at here? This is my master here. That will go there to the battery connection of the master. This is the master here. Master comes out to the um, starter on the APU. Bingo, bango. That's good. All right. Um, let's connect these up. So, yeah, this is a jet turbine here. All right. And those will are like systems. They come together. That goes to the master. I'm trying to do more of this connection stuff as I do it. But as you can see, I'm way ahead and haven't yet to do any of this. So. Do a little flight here in a little bit. Just want to get some of this housekeeping crap done. This is a pain, hooking up all the electricity for my anti-flaps. You know, the control surfaces give us extra lift, which is nice for the ability to just be able to kind of make whatever you want. But consequence is my flaps give me way too much lift, and so I have to counteract them by making anti-flaps that essentially delete what my flaps are doing, which is good because it actually gives me a bunch of drag, which I need or I want. Let's put it that way. So I get the drag that I want. But as you can see, it's Connection City here for getting the electricity. So 
So this already flies beautifully, which is nice. You know, that's the first thing I do is get things run up and running right. Let me just see what you guys are writing. Yeah, that's fine. Especially like, you know, you get a lot of people that are talking, oh, you know, I can do 500 nautical miles in my plane. And the problem, that that's great. That's realistic. The issue that I have is, unfortunately, the distances in game are so short. That really annoys me. And so, like, I like having my stuff have realistic ranges as well. The issue is the game distances are just so short. It's like, you don't have the utility of it. So I, in this plane, I'm actually kind of doing some... Uh, I don't know if distance compression is the right way to think about it, but since the distances are painfully short in game, I have to kind of, um, what I'm kind of doing is, like, I increased my vertical speed for my climb because, you know, I want to still get up to 30,000 feet, and it only takes me 12 minutes to get the Arctic, so it's like, to be able to climb up to 30, descend back down from 30, um, you know, I need to kind of... Uh, make my vertical speed very high in order to make it viable so it's that's a pl plenty of range that's two trips to the arctic you know this can't do this can do one trip to the arctic and then it has to refuel and that's kind of on purpose so that i have to um so it actually kind of operates as a real airliner so i don't do 10 trips and have to then refuel you know i have to refuel every time i go up there and so it adds some constraints to me go ahead and hook that to the master where are you at there? Where is the connection? Right there. Okay. Let's see. Let me see what are you guys saying. Yeah, I just wish they would. Inc you know, I I have no. I don't begrudge anybody the short distances who like that. But it's like we have, you know, all the little islands that change. Uh, you know how far they are via the seeds. Those are all super duper close. Like somebody posted on Reddit, they were thrilled that they had an island that was like 20 inches off of the mainland. It's like, that's fine if that's what somebody wants, but it would be like, it'd also be nice if you had the ability to have some really far fetched stuff or far flung stuff for those of us who like some distance. All right, that's going to go as an independent system into here. Where's my master? I keep forgetting where the master connects there. That is my, those are my thrust reversers. Those go in. Control service engines are in. A lot of this, you know, is, is cumbersome because they're it's just decoration stuff that's all powered. Um, let's go ahead and work the hot bus. So hot bus, this is hot bus, this is hot bus. No, it isn't. Um, this can connect for now. This is my what I'm using for an engine starter. This is hot bus. This is hot bus. Then this needs to be, where are we at here? Uh, the back needs to be hot bust. You can be cooked there. What are you? Your stairs, your hot bust. All this is hot bust. So run that off the hot bus. What else is going to the hot bus? Do not know yet. Gear is not on the hot bus. So gear is going to be hooked together. So bingo, bango, bongo. Uh, these are my gear. They're getting connected. And then they are going on their own system here. I don't think this needs electricity, but I'm going to bang electricity into it anyway. Might as well. So that's gear connected, um, and then I need to run it up to the cold bus, or the uh, connection side of it. So right there. Did I just not hook this up correctly? My, what I thought was gonna be my hot bus. Let me check it. I think I might have hooked this up wrong. Nope, that's it's right. It's on hot bus side. Yeah, like if we look at the map here, let's save up really quick. So like, look at the map. It's just like, so I'm up to, this is the Arctic from here to, where are we at? We should be down here. Yeah, we're right there. So from FJ Warner, which is usually where I hang around, to Tajin. That is, where you at there, guy? Right there. That's about 60 uh, nautical miles. So insanely close. 
you know, that's the farthest flung area is only about 60 nautical miles, you know, so it's like, and this jet does 309 knots, so it's like, you know, it just, it takes me 12 minutes to, to get up there. It's pretty silly. Um, let's keep working. All right, so APU is in. That's pretty good. Um, let's make sure that that is connected. Let's make sure everything else is connected. What else do I need on this panel? So let us look. So we have bad AB. We have AB reads. We have uh, ground power, battery connection, APU. Gens will go out to the gens. We have S watts need a report. Uh, what are you, APU temp, I assume? Let me check it. APU temp. So I need to read that and then bleeds. Okay. So I need S watts and APU temp. I'm going to screw this all up when I change this panel, I bet. But whatever. It'll just be reconnections. So let's see, number input, APU S watts. S watts, and then let's do number M, uh, composite, nope, number, what do I want? I need a composite input engine. All right, so let's do that. Should have put these down here, I'll move them now. I don't know, I'll probably kill all the connections here doing, moving these, but whatever. I'll fix them. All right, let's see what I have here. So I have engine, APUS watts. Let's go check those numbers. Would like to put this electrical panel to bed and move on for now. So that's, oh, what's that? 10, 11, 10, 11. So 10 is S watts, 11 is temp. Okay. Okay, and then you can go to, yeah. All right, so that's in. We'll see what else I need. That pretty much puts that mostly to bed. Let's see, I probably have to reconnect a bunch of stuff because I screwed it all up. Uh, but let's fix that. That goes there. And then I'm just going to have the APU will shut itself off if it over temps. It's going to be running very low RPS, and if it over temps, it can shut itself off. Yep, I need to reconnect these because I moved them. Is that fuel? The fuel, okay. Fuel, air. Clutch. What do you got? APUS watts. Gen. Is that Gen? Yep, that's Gen. Starter. And what are you? URPS. Okay, so that's pretty good on that. Um, and I'll swell the panel if I need to. How's we looking on this? That's good. Okay, good. Electric panel is pretty good for right now. All right, let's attach this to the hull and check check it all. Oh, wow, camera's been doing this weird jumpy stuff, and I hate it. It's just like it it like it quickly flicks down. It's quite annoying. Let me check chat. Yeah, I would love some sort of the ability to just contour the world how we'd like it like I, dude i would like if we could make the let's say we could make the arctic distance between the arctic and the arid biome i don't know 200 nautical miles you know so we're talking 400 kilometers so you'd say this then you have soil in the middle um you know they could probably do that with some sort of slider where you set like you know your scale so like one would be where they are if you Put it out to 10 everything would be 10 times further apart um you know Let's see where we're at here I'm trying to catch up on chat here yeah 
Uh, yes, uh, I'm going to do a flight here in a minute. I'm just trying to get the electrical systems down. I'm going to go for a little flight. I'll show you guys where I'm at. Yeah, that would be nice. Some base building in the Arctic would be good. You know, you, you can do it with the, putting in a uh, mission with the mission editor, but that's a pain. You know, it's better to be able to do it like, you know, with the career build series. I bought the island, then built on it. I kind of like that. That's fun. That gives you some good progression. Yeah, at least at least 20 kilometers. You know, for me, that's only 10 nautical miles. I'm going 300 knots. You know, so you figure I'm doing five miles a minute. That would be two, two, two extra minutes further away. <laughs> FJ to Tajan. Yeah, I just looked it up. I'm sitting, just looked at it. Yeah, it's still, that's only 60 nautical miles. Like, that's going to take me, you know, no time. Let me see. Yeah, well, that's that's what I'm saying. Is You know, I, I never, uh, Mr. G, I'm never trying to squash anyone else's parade. You know, a lot of people, like... I, like I was saying, you know, people on Reddit keep putting up these posts of, hey, look what a cool seat I have. This island is 20 feet from the mainland. I'm like, why would you ever want that? Well, you know, that that's what that person wants. That's cool for them. Um, so I think it would be great if they had a slider and you could kind of say how far you wanted it. I'm going to get us back up on autopilot and do a little flight. Um, and that way... I can go hit the bathroom really quick here. So um, kind of a you know regional airliner size... Uh, kind of inspired by a bunch of planes. Uh, it has air stairs in the back. So let's jump in the back. Yeah, yeah. I, I need to fix this little notch. It catches my head. Now yeah, come on in. Raise the air stairs up. Now we're in. Uh, lab doesn't have a door. As it doesn't have a door control yet, but there's a lavatory in there. This is gonna be like a little galley area. Uh, it's 39 passenger seats, so it'll be Stormlink uh, galley up front. Uh, entry door here, cockpit, that was about the height ours was, we had like one or two steps up, jump on in, Let's just go for a quick flight, and I'll go hit the bathroom, alright, so we're fl we're up, uh, let's go 078, up to 5,000 feet, we'll go heading hold, altitude hold, alright, we'll taxi out, so the next thing I'm going to do is set my flaps. So on flaps 9 degrees. Okay. Taxi on out. Yeah, you know, definitely, you know, I think the best thing they can always do is give people the options to configure the game how they want. That's a, I'm a big advocate of that. It's like, you know, if you're constantly driving around in ships and all you care about in the game is ships... Uh, let's take, do a quick takeoff here. I'll kind of concentrate for this. 80 knots. V1. Rotate. Pause the rate. Gear's coming up. Show you the gear. Here come the gear. Exposed wells, kind of like a Embraer 145, 737. Closed doors in the front. Uh, let's go ahead. We'll keep the autopilot on. Uh, flaps are coming up. Flaps up. All right, so let's quickly throw it on a, an Arctic run here. Um, so I'll go ahead and set a waypoint there. Let's go about, ooh, I don't know, 340 on the heading, 340. Let's go ahead and climb and maintain 30,000 feet. So flight level 300. So that's a, that looks realistic to me. Climb rates, altitude, that looks about like how we used to climb out. So we climb out at 200 knots generally is what I would do um, when I was climbing out. Let's see where are we at. Uh, 340 is probably going to be pretty good. So like that right there, see, you see 114 nautical miles. Um, once I speed us up, once we get over 10,000 feet, which I'm going to speed us up to 250. So we do 250 knots below 10,000 feet. That's uh, you know, violating regs if you go over. Um, you see how nice granular control? Probably heard that a bunch from me. But you see how I can get it within a knot of where I want it? That's what I want. So there's 250 knots on the nose. Uh, once we hit 10, we can accelerate to whatever we want. 
Need to, need to add some yaw control back in the autopilot. I completely took it out. So right now my roll works with a tilt sensor and that adds yaw so that it actually behaves properly like a proper airplane. Um, but you see how it kind of wavers a little bit. That's I just need a little bit of uh, yaw control from the autopilot to keep that from doing that. So that's a little tweak. And in uh, 200 feet, we can go fast. Here we go, 10,000 feet. Let's speed it up. So we'll go max speed. So should uh, hit about 309 knots. So like you'll see how fast this this goes by to kind of make my point. But you know, like I said, I think the best thing they could do is add a slider, and a, a number of one would make everything where it is. And when you make your world, if you you know, for me, if I did 10, that means everything would be 10 times the distance. So right there, what was that? That was 120 kilometers. That would be 1,020 kilometers or 500 nautical miles. You know, so that would take a little over an hour. You know, even I probably wouldn't want it that far. But, you know, if you're always running ships all the time, there's no way you'd want 1,000 nautical miles or, a, you know, 500 nautical miles to the Arctic if you like doing a shipping run to the Arctic. Um, you might like it standard. It still takes eight hours in the stock game. So that's one of the things where I think if you had a slider, you know, I, I could have a save where my islands were at their present distance if I was doing a lot of shipping. And then maybe I'd have an airplane save where I just moved the slider to 10 times and an Arctic run takes me an hour and 10 minutes, you know. And that way you, it would make you so that you have to build things that could, you know, fly for an hour, you know, that would have an hour, um, uh, you know, fuel, hours worth of fuel. So we're up to 302 knots here. As you notice, no smoke in my engines, so that is nice. Don't like the smoke, so I got rid of the smoke. See if I'm caught up on chat. I am. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So 302 knots. Um, so I had to make the um, the climb rate pretty ex extreme. So what's that? You know, we're up in we're up about getting approaching 5,000 feet per minute or something. Four four by four or something. You know, so uh, you know, we're approaching 4,000 feet per minute there, which is extreme, but it's the only way that I can make a trip to the Arctic and still climb up to 30,000 feet. You notice we're already north of Sawyer Islands here. Uh, flight level 210. And as soon as we level out, I'll quickly go to the bathroom and I'll come back. Need to do things like index gauges, but uh, let's see. Did my electrical, so like see my bad AB are now up? I can read those now. I can now select those. Um, and then, so the way these systems are set up is realistically like they would be in a real airliner. So you come through, you have your electrical panel. Um, then you go over the, you have windshield heats. I have my fuels, my fuel cross feeds. So that's my fuel section. Then I have my hydraulic section. Then I have my uh, climate controls. These two are dead gauges for now. I have all my lighting. And then these are all my fire indicators up top and my fire suppression on the top. I have my um, six packs. Then I have my engine, my N1s and 2s, my inlet turbine temperatures. Ver set vertical speed, I'm probably just going to get rid of and do something else. I would have loved to put the autopilot stuff up here. That's usually where it goes. But the issue is with these panels here, I have to put monitors above them or else the two collisions touch. So I don't want that. Gear. Um, gear position I haven't filled out yet. And then that's a dead gauge. Down here we have heading hold, altitude hold, GPS. Uh, we'll also have my bearing system in there, my radios. That will be in this page here. Uh, flap spoilers, flaps and spoiler indications, uh, brake release, uh, brake indicator. These are going to be how we start the engines right now. I'm just doing a single push button and I have this length, but these are going to be independent. And then I'm going to have, uh, so that's fuel valve starter for the two turbines. And then we have cross bleed. So you're actually going to have to have the APU on or another engine on to be able to start. So it'll be kind of simulating pneumatics. So we're up at uh, flight level 300. I'm going to quickly put in a little uh, heading change here, but let's quickly do the math. So uh, we're currently about, let's say, 30, just to be safe, 30 nautical miles from there. So we're currently doing five miles a minute. So that's going to take us six minutes to get to my final approach fix for my approach. So that's only six minutes away. 
And I should be over BBG, it is. Okay, so that's six minutes away before we start our approach. And that's only maybe a couple, maybe a minute or two to land. So we're, we're, we're only eight minutes away from land in the Arctic. Um, that's how ridiculous it is. So now we need to realize how fast we need to get down. So we can go down at about, say, 4,000 feet per minute. Let's say three to be safe. We need 10 minutes. That means we need to go down. So let's go ahead. We're already descending, which that's another reason why I really wish we had some more distance is I come up to flight level 300 and I immediately have to go down, which you would do in a jet. We used to do that. Even if we were going like Chicago, Green Bay, we'd go up to 30, come back down. All right, I'll be right back, guys. All right, I am back. <laughs> hey, we, we need to go back. We need to go use the lab in real life as well. You know what I should have done? The problem is my lab isn't, the door isn't connected. Oh, stuck, 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 stuck. I'm gonna jump, sit on one of the jump seats. When people say that they're in the most uncomfortable seat in the plane, uh, the jump seat is the most uncomfortable seat in the plane. All right, so let's go back. So this, so what I should have done is I should have RP'd it, but I, my, my lav door is not hooked up yet. That's where the lavatory is. So I should have been sitting in the lavatory. But, uh, all right, let's go. Uh, so, you know, you see how it's oscillating? And that's because I completely took out the yaw component and the autopilot. So that's going to go back in for final smoothing. So I'm kind of testing that out. So uh, if you look, we're about 15 nautical miles out. We're still doing about six miles per minute. All right, so uh, it's not going to take us long. It's going to take us two and a half minutes to get there. We're still at 15,000 feet. We're descending down at about 4,000 feet, so we're going to be there in about three minutes, so that's pretty good. Uh, that will work for us. So I'm going to go ahead, and we'll continue down. Set that to 1,000 feet. And so when I plug the yaw back in, that will fix the oscillation we're getting in here. Um, three, so what's happening is I have it set, so there's a tilt sensor, so as, the, as we roll... It auto uh, adds enough yaw because really in real life you do not need in a in a twin jet like this you do not need to touch the rudder at all. We used to fly with our feet flat on the floor as we turned and you you would uh, arc nicely. So I have that simulated. All right, so this uh, this marker here, as you can see, is sitting over BVG. That's going to be my final approach fix for going into Tajin. Uh, so some systems I have to hook up as well. So I have thrust reversers. So thrust reversers are going to be activated. Um, it uh, So the thrust reversers are going to be activated when I go, if I'm on the ground and I bring my, my thrust levers back below zero. And so those will only activate when I'm on the ground and um, over a certain speed. That's how they worked in the Embraer. That's what I'm going to simulate in this. Uh, I have, what else, um, spoilers are going to come up um, when the way the spoiler, no, the thrust reverses didn't work that way. Thrust reverses are manual. That's how they're going to work. Spoilers are going to be um, 
when you're on the ground. So it'll be distance sensor plus over a certain speed. Um, so essentially when I touch down, the spoilers will come up until about 20 uh, knots and then at below 20 knots, spoilers will self retract. All right, so where are we at here? Uh, 7,000 feet, we'll be, di we'll, be at out we'll be down in two minutes to 1,000 feet, so that's pretty good. We're beating it. You know, when in doubt, try to beat your speed. Uh, oh, I, am, I am speeding, though. 250 under 10. So if it, the uh, tower would have been calling us, yelling at us for uh, speeding. They, they just always ask, uh, what's your speed? And we'd say, uh, 250. <laughs> So he'd always just tell him 250 because he, you know, he didn't care that we were really speeding. It was more of saying, "Hey, slow down," but uh, he'd be 250. So as you can see, I can keep my speed within a knot. That's how I like it. All right, so we are currently uh, about eight nautical miles off that. Let's go uh, left heading 320. That's gonna cut it. Let's go 325. Cut. The, I don't want to cut the corner too much. So we're coming up on our final approach fix. So you see T uh, BVG on this on my seed is pretty much in line with the final approach course of Tajin. All right, so we're below 250 knots. Gear's coming down. Flaps are coming down. You'll see the speed is bleeding itself off. I haven't touched the thrust. So one of the main things you use um, gear for in an airliner is getting slow. So you have to do everything faster in a jet Autopilot's coming off. I'm going to manually fly it. So I need to trim here. So I changed a bunch of factors of my configuration, so I need to trim. So we have full flaps in there. Uh, gear is down. So I'm trimming. So you have to do this in real life. You have to do it in this plane, too. Is all my stuff unsettled. And if you look up there, uh, we're going to start turning for the mainland. So we're going to do this visually. I'm going to start slowing down to my uh, approach speed, which is 120 knots. And I'm going to... So I should be above visual with the runway. We're close. I can almost see it. So I keep slowing it down. I'm fast. There's the runway. Runway's in sight. Slowing down. And I'm visual with Tajin. So you see how quickly this happens. Um, you know, so... I had to do things, like I said, I had to make the vertical, the uh, amount of vertical speed that you do for climbs and descents. I had to make them excessive to make them so that I could actually do a realistic flight. So, so watch my speed. You know, I always talk about having granular thrust control. Watch that speed. See how it's within a knot? That's how you fly in real life. Keep it within about a knot or two. You know, if you get in wind shear, it changes, but, you know. Can't really control wind shear. Aiming at the two big squares on the runway, as you can see there. So a jet, you fly with power down the whole way. The gear and the flaps are a lot of drag. They're set up for to be to fly clean, so you need a good bit of thrust. Just taking off just a hair of thrust on the way in. No, you, you don't flare much in a jet. You come all the way in, you fly it into the ground like that. All right, and we're down. So we kick the thrust reversers on. Here come the thrust reversers. They're not connected to any braking yet. The spoilers would come up when I finally get it done. So I'm going to do a very minimal braking here. And so taxi in. So that's what this is looking like. And again, this jet's going to be used for um, starting a new series, which will be. Um, you know, I was hoping they would have Stormlink updated already, but I'm going to try to get Stormlink up and running, and if not, I'll just RP it a little bit. Engine died because presently I don't have it configured to idle, so. But, um, so that's what's going on there. So it's flying pretty well. Um, you know, it's nice how fast this is because I can do a quick one. Uh, it's not going to have real thrust reverse, and the reason is the game, everything slows down too fast in the game anyway, so it's kind of a waste. Um, it's just going to, it would instantly stop me, essentially. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a brake factor. So it would add, like, you see how fast I stopped? I never touched, uh, the, literally the brakes aren't connected on this. There's no need for braking on this. So I, uh, you know, the thrust reverses, all they're going to do is um, add a small bit of main brake force on it. Because the game, just like, you stop super quick, so...
Let's do a save on this, make sure I don't screw it up. All right, so this is good. Let's see, what do I want to work on next? So electrical systems are in for the most part. Continue with the panels here. Uh, what are you? That's done. Bleeds, I'm going to do later. Uh, fuel. So let's see. So let's go ahead and get our fire section done. Let's do that. So my fire section is, I have a dead gauge there. That can go there. That's there. That's there. And that's there. So let's do the fire panels. All right. All right, fire panels. Shouldn't need too much in these fire panels as far as um, they don't do much, so. All right, um, so these are gonna be pretty simple. Update that, make sure I didn't kill anything I didn't good. All right, you go there, and then you go here. All right, uh, let's see. Let me start working some numbers. I need to set these numbers up here on the fire panels. So that is fire test is one. APU fires two. Anti-ice is three. Windshield heat is four. Uh, these do, you know, they really don't do anything. Um, those are faked. Let's see. Um, what are you? You are APU fire suppression is going to be a toggle. That's um, five. Fire indicator is going to be six. Uh, port fuel is going to be seven. Seven. Starboard fuel is going to be eight. And that's fire suppression number one is going to be toggle. That's going to be, what are we talking, nine. You are number two fire indicator. You're going to be ten. You are hydraulics A. You're going to be, um, the hell number am I on? 11? 11. Hydraulics B, you should be 12. All right, what are you? You are fire suppression number two. Uh, can I put, I should be able to put the rest of the panel on here. Let's do that instead. Um, fire suppression number two. I forget where I'm at, so that's... 13. Oh, come on. Should be able to hopefully put the rest on here. That would be helpful if I can do that. Uh, what are you? You are dead for now. You are what? Cabin temp? Uh, what are you? 12, 13, 14. What's that? 15, 15. You are 16. Hopefully, yeah, I should be able to get the rest of them on this panel. That'll save me some headache because these are annoying. Um, leads, that's 17. That's crossfeed, 17. Yeah, I should be able to run this like this. Okay, good. Um, 18. I'm out of chat for a second. Let's see, 19. 20. What do you hide? 21. And if I need more spaces, I can double up the dials, but I don't uh, shoot up plenty of space here. 22. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Six, seven, and eight. All right, good. So that does the rest of this panel. That makes life a little bit easier. All right, let's see where are we at here. 
Yeah, jump seat's never fun. Usually you get a panel in the in the knees. Like 7.5 used to pinch your leg. You know, 777 was nice. 777 had a proper seat in it. But any of those real transcon stuff are, were helpful. Yeah, no power backs. Uh, most places do not power back after the Air Florida crash. Air Florida powered back at DCA, blew a bunch of... Um, snow all over their wings and then crashed into what was the name of the bridge uh, they crashed into one of the bridges because of that did i just delete the panel uh, no i didn't this is, is this it fire panels yep that's it okay uh so after the air florida crash uh pretty much nobody power backs anymore in this country at least i will be doing more review videos they are kind of the most time consuming so i I will probably put one at least one out next week. I'm going to try to get two out next week. So that's kind of the plan on that. Okay, let's see. Um, all right, so what do I need? I need on this, I need... Um, check all these. This should be push for the test. Those are toggles. Um, just kind of visualizing this panel before I start digging into it. So I need three temps. Okay, let's get three temps. So where is my fire here? This is fire. Let's expand this and see if this will... Okay, of course it expanded the, the wrong way and cut into my panel. So let's cut you. All right, let's grab you and expand you again. All right, so we need three temps. Uh, you are composite, actually. You are a number input. You are a number input. Okay, so this is going to be APU temp. This is going to be um, number one temp. You are a number two temp. Number two temp, and that's good. Okay, good. Come in here, where are you at? So, let's do a property text here for where where these nodes spawn. Okay. Yeah, I, I like power backs, but um, you know, after Air Florida. The other thing, power backs are not good because one thing is when you power back, you can't use your brakes. You have to power forward to stop. If you tap your brakes going backwards, you will hit the tail. It will fall back on its tail and you'll crunch the tail. And that is no bueno. So uh, very few, if anybody, power backs, especially in, in the U.S. It's so much uh, safer and cheaper to run a tug. All right, let's see where are we at here. So I need my I need to check numbers here. Let's go check numbers. All right, so we have fire test, and then we have let me write them down here. Should do this on a drive, but sometimes it's easier just write it on paper. All right, so luckily these are faked. Which one of the nice things with having fake gauges is if I need space, I can use them. Um, so let's see, uh, two is going to be APU fire. All right. And then I have, what's that? Six is one F. And then I have 10 is two F. All right. So that's got my fires done. And then fuel is going to be, uh, what are you talking there? Seven eight. Uh, F one is seven, and then F two is eight. Okay, let's so let's start banging those out. See what I can get. One of the reasons I want to put all the panels together is my hydraulics are faked anyway. So by putting them on the same panel, I don't have to move them. All right, let's see. Um, I need to write these. Nope, not you. All right, what am I doing here? So two. Oh, let's see. 
I need a write on offs. Um, write on offs. So I need. So uh, I'll just do one. We'll go to what are you up to? Ten. Ten. Okay. It'll be a little cumbersome, but it will work. So uh, if APU temp three is over. So I'll say 110. Okay. So one of the things that the fire suppression system does in a real airliner is it um, does multiple things. It shut, it closes the fuel valves. It, um, you blow your bottles separately. You don't go right to blowing um, suppressant in there. Close the fuel valves, hydraulic valves, and electrical. It kills all the breakers essentially. You pull the hand, you you press the that, and it disconnects everything to try to you know choke it out. Most of the time, the fire will go out unless you poured a ton of jet fuel in there, or a ton of hydraulic oil in there. You're, you're probably going to put it out once you hit the button. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, and I'm going to do it at 110 so that I actually don't get a real fire because I don't want to have to put in a water suppressant system just annoying and it's going to take up a bunch of space and I need weight blocks in those I want eight weight blocks in those engines so and fire test is one so, so let's see uh, let's see where's panels there let's go one fire test is there let's connect please thank y'all all right, so if that's greater than that or that, zing, um, and then where are we at here? So we're talking two. All right, good. So let's go and do that. All right, and that's temp one. Where's one go? One goes at six. So what's that? Three, six. Look at that. Guessed it on the first try. Nice. Then that should be 10. All right. And then you go. Boop, boop. And that's going to go out to the panel. All right. So that's that. And then fire suppression will read into the engine panels and APU panels and kill it. So let's go ahead and test that really quick. Got to connect it first, of course. So that's that, that's that, that's APU temp, comes off of there. Then we need uh, number one temp. So we'll go off of uh, the turbine section because that's going to be your hottest. Doesn't You know, in game it's not really like that, but IRL, so I try to keep it like that. Um, that it? Should be it. Yep. Okay. Let's spawn you, see what you do. All right, so the first thing we do... So this is what I would do in real life is we didn't have air stairs, so I'm going to jump in the sucker here. Ha. There we go. So we get in. Um, first thing we do when I get in the airplane is there was a battery power connect right here. So select a battery and then click it. That would give you power. So you'd have power in the real plane. Then the next thing you do is you want your APU on if you want your APU on. You could do ground power if you're plugged into the uh, into the um, gate. If not, you're going to turn your APU on. Before you turn your APU on, you want to make sure that you're going to be able to put out a fire if you need to. So you do fire test. As you see, those will blink. They're not blinking right now. But And then you also get an annoying buzzer that will yell at you. And so what that's showing you that if you had a fire, that the alarms would go off. And that's your fire test. And so those lights will also come off, come on if I over... Uh, if I over temp my engines. And so the hope with that is that if I over temp my engines, I can quickly go kill the engine before it catches on fire. So I'll get a light and then kill it. And then that will kill my engine. And then, you know, the turbines, I'm not going to light on fire. But um, the APU, I'll probably make self shut off. But um, figure that out at some point. I don't want to go into real fire suppression. The problem is, you know, with the way the ducted fans work, I would have to, if I get a, too much asymmetrical thrust, so I'd have to cross shaft them, and I'm not doing all that, just for faking engine failures, essentially. I'm likely to have an engine failure is pretty slim. Let's add some blinkers in here. And let's add in the siren, too. All right, so let's go...
That's the test. Let's do uh, Boolean. That will work. So we want... So this will be for the alarm. And then what else do I want? I want so I want alarm and I want these blinking. Um the lights will blink. And they were fast. You know, they had really fast blinks on them. So let's do I don't know. Try point 3s maybe. See what that looks like. And I'm going to set up a couple, and that way I can kind of tell which one look most realistic to me. So this one will go high. We'll do fives. This one will go low. We'll do ones. All right, those will blink for me. I need a sound block. So Let's see. Fire bell. Okay. And so the fire bell goes here. Now let's do a test of what the fire system would sound like. Okay, let's go ahead and grab a buzzer. That worked with the new ones much. I played with it a little bit, so um, I love that they added all the new sounds. That's definitely a big clapperoo for the uh, devs. Definitely not. That's actually not bad. That's that's like a stick shaker noise. How do I shut that up? I know how to shut up. That doesn't shut it up. <laughs> Get out of here. Uh, turn the sound down. Turn the volume up. That's hilarious. What is that crap? That's hilarious. <laughs> so let me find it. Uh, let's see. RJ 145. Fire test. Hopefully... This doesn't cause me problems trying to find a video for you guys of the fire test. Um, let's see. The fire overheat protect until the fire is extinct. Yeah, I know fire how, extinguishing I know how the, the works, switches right? on the forward floor. Just trying to find the sound of it. Um, find it. See if I can find it. Trying to see what it sounds like. I can't recall it off the top of my head. Where's fire test? Where's fire test? Let me see if it, this has it in there. Yep. All unit okay. Trying to see if he does it. Trying to see if he does a fire test. A fire test guy. I'm just watching a video, trying to see, remember what the sound of the fire test sounded like. I don't even need to do a fire test. Nope. No fire test. Thanks for the video, guy. Um, let's see. What does the fire test sound like? I can't remember. All right, I'll do it. Um, oh, here it is. Found it. Hello, all, and welcome back to another video. Uh, we're on an E190, Embraer E190. Uh, here's an Embraer 190. How... Right hand. I just want to hear test. it. Here we go. Press and hold. That's it. You'll get engine one. That's your fire engine test, fire so handles. it's a bell. Okay, good. So let's bring the sound block back in. So that's hilarious that I delete the buzzer and the noise doesn't go away. 
When I alt tabbed out of the game, though, it uh, shut up. So let me see the bell. Because there's, there's a different sound for everything, so that helps you identify what it is. That's pretty good. That's better. Nope. Two. Definitely two, I think. That's stuck on now. Okay. <laughs> I have a, a, I like that one. That sounds like somebody yelling. That's what I want. Okay. Um. That's the one. Okay. Let's do, uh, where you at there, guy? There. Okay, so if any of those. And this should be really, really low duration. That's supposed to be a very fast bell. All right, uh, let's test this. See how this sucker sounds. All right. So let's check out our fire test. So fire test, like I sh you know, you saw in that quick video of the Embraer there, is that's one of the first things you do to make sure that if you have a fire, you're going to be able to put it out. The APU catches on fire right away. You want to be able to pull that APU handle and, or pull the APU fire suppression and kill it. So come in, fire test. See the lights are going. No buzzer, though. Okay, because is it trying to do all of them? Let's see. Eh, check the logic, see what's up with that. So let's see. Um, how do you do them as ORs, uh, the slash? Okay, so it'd be um, X. Where the hell is that slash on the keyboard? Where the hell? Where's that slash? Anybody know off the top of the head where that OR slash is? I'm looking for it. Oh, I see it. There we go. There we go. Um, what is it? X. I'm using all four, right? So X, Y, Z, W, X, Y, Y, Z, W. All right, so that should hopefully work now. I wasn't getting my uh, buzzer. Let's try the buzzer now. Uh, oh, the, I was wondering why the lights are all different, because I set them up all different to pick which one I like the best. So. This is the sort of detailing stuff that I love, so it's like it's way in the back, so it's hard to hear. But so definitely see this one closest to me right here. That's the one. That's about the pacing you want. So what is that? That is APU fire. And so I want to sync that to APU fire as well. So. So it was APU fires this, so that one's the first one. Okay, so oh, where are we at there? Let's I don't know if I want that buzzer to be a three, but let's see. It didn't sound bad as a one, it was just so far from the cockpit that it was hard to hear. Can somebody just type something in chat to let me know you guys are still there? Sometimes uh, when it goes quiet, I just want to make sure that something's not up with the chat system. All right, let's do a fire test. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, definitely. I need, I need it faster. That's good. Sounds good, though. It's just quiet. Uh, part of it is I have a headset on the seat, so let me get out of the seat. That's actually not bad. It syncs up with the lights, too, which is nice. So that's fire test. Hey, right, beautiful. So that is pretty good. What else do I need on these panels? So next is... Um, these are faked. Again, they do nothing. Um... 
Uh, see, eventually this anti-ice and the windshield heat will do something. Um, I'm going to make a enunciator panel that will have my cautions and stuff. And so at the top, it will have just an um, indicator that will say um, ice. So essentially, let's say we're at 30,000 feet and we um, are at negative 50. You know, it, it's also, it's you know, if you're not in clouds, you're not going to get ice. But I'll just make it if it's a negative a certain temperature. Uh, I need to click on the anti-ice. And then windshield heat you always have on. So that's just going to be part of the checklist. And it will probably show up as WH on windshield heat on there. So that's going to be there. So the next is fuel. So port starboard fuel are in there. So that's what? 7, 8? Okay. Let's do that. So that's coming along. You know, a lot of panel work here. Uh, once the cockpit's done, it's paint. It's pretty much done. It's... Uh, I got, you know, it's flying correctly. That took the most work. Um, getting the engines geared properly to work right, that took the most work, actually. All right, so let's do a right. Seven and eight. Two channels. Bingo. And let's go. I need to add two. So let's see. Um, number... Number one, fuel, and number two, fuel. Often you'll do it as number one and two, number one being the uh, leftmost side, number two being the right side. So if you have two engines, number one is left engine, on the, it's captain's engine is the way you do it. So number one engine is the captain's engine, number two engine is the FO's engine. On Proteus, I have four engines, so one is the furthest out on the left wing, two is next inbound. And then three is inbound, four is outboard. That's how they do them. So like 747 would be one through four like that. All right, so that's good. Uh, let's go ahead and go in here. So this is where my conversions come in um, to an annoying level here. Um, let's hit that up. So I need to, where are you at there? Up here. So let's grab these. So they're in liters. They need to be converted from liters to gallons to pounds. Don't necessarily need to convert them from. Let me see what a what a liter of diesel weighs in pounds. In pounds. All right. How much? Let's see. I don't need Quora. That's really one point nine pounds per liter. Let's just do that. Okay. That'll be easier than double converting it. I usually end up doing it in my head. So let's see. Um, fuel is coming in liters. Um, so X times 1.9. And that's my fuel in pounds. So. All right. And then I currently have an, an imbalance because of where my microcontrollers are. So eventually that will change. Uh, fluid level is going to go up here to number one, fuel. Number two, fuel comes in here. So part of this is I made this so you have to actually refuel it when you go up to the Arctic, which is going to be expensive. And so part of that is I want this kind of realistic. So um, you know, make a trip up the Arctic. Diesel uh, jet fuel is going to be damn expensive. Unless I ferry some up there, and so that's also an option. Take Proteus, fly up with a container of jet fuel, dump it in the workbench. So that's kind of, it. again, you know, a lot of people didn't like the changes with Industrial Frontier. I'm digging them because it gives you some logistics stuff to do, and I kind of dig on logistics. So uh, we currently have 13,000 pounds on our port side. We have 13.2, we have 12.8, so 400 pound imbalance. So if we had a 400 pound imbalance, we'd click cross feed, we'd cross them. So I need to set up a cross feed. Let's do that next, as they are also on there. So let's do that. So I need to find a punch area in here. So let's punch. What are you? Are you, you are something. Of course you are. Let's see. Um... Could go under like this. I'm just trying uh losing one weight block's not the end of the world. I have a bunch of weight blocks in here trying to get the balance just right. So let me show you some tricks that I did here. So I was adamant on having flaps that look correct, and I was adamant on having spoilers that look correct, and I was adamant on having it fly correctly. And so in the game, 
Uh, so the flaps, as you can see, are behind my center of gravity. And so because of that, it causes the tail to try to lift up on takeoff unless you come in here and you put in an absolute ton of little fins that cancel out the flaps. So that's what that's all about. Um, that's what that does. And so I had to do a bunch of, you know, weight balancing in here, and that's what all this jazz is. Let's see. Um, trying to think of the easiest way to do this fuel without making an absolute nightmare. I could go up into the floor to do it. I can get one side going. So, I, you know what, I'll put it on one side. I'll just do draw push, essentially. Let's do that. Uh, let's let's do this too. Let's go back and put that. I need to get my. So you, you have something called single point refueling, where you have um, one place where you actually do your refueling, and I need to set up single point refueling. So I need to have the plug in for the single point, and so let me see if I can't get that in there and not cause myself issues here. So see, that's a problem right there. Is the um, I can fix that though. So that is there. This is going to give me an issue. So it's actually only one seat, so I can actually probably make this work. Famous last words. Okay, let's try this. Mm -hmm. Trying to get this single point done. Um, let's try to get this under the seat somehow. I don't think I can. Uh, mechanically, this is going to be a pain. So um, the way this works in real life is you have a a little door that's right here, and that's where you plug in all your fuel. And it's single point because, you know, instead of having to plug into multiple tanks, you can just plug in a one tank and, and fuel. I could, all I have to do is put something there. Let me see. Let me see if I don't really like it here, but I could do it right here. I have to cut in my fuel tank a little bit, but it's not the end of the world, I don't think, if I do that. So let's cut that like that. Okay, can't buckle in here. Okay. That's going to buckle if I do that. Okay, that's not a good spot for either. Trying to find a single point refueling slot. It's not terrible. What do you look like if I can pull you out? Don't know how I can get you out of there without being a pain. Because you're, uh, you're too wide. Mm -hmm. Should have built the single point refueling. Let's see if I have something in the back I can work with. That's, um, this might work here. My, now I can't rotate that out to get what I want. Okay. So uh, I think maybe here I might be able to get single point in. It doesn't have to be where it was in the Embraer, but I kind of want it be kind of close. The one thing I uh, I could make it interesting and go underneath the lavatory. So here's my lav and I have a little faked toilet in here. I could try to stick it in there behind the lavatory. Let's try that because that's kind of like a little hidey hole there. And then here's my, that my lavatory. That's my lavatory. Microcontroller for the lavatory is there. What are you... That's underneath the lav. That works in the floor. That's actually not bad to put it there. Let's see. I might be able to do it here. This is probably it right here. I think this is it right here. Okay, this is where it's going. Of course, you're right there, too. Um, okay, let's get this banged in there. Nice. So this is where it's going. Um Oh, look at that. Even better. Perfect. Okay, so this is where my single point refueling is going to go in. What are you back here? 
that's all there. And this is in the cabinet for the toilet. Okay, so let's try to get in here. It gets a little bit complex. You start banging in the walls like this. So I wish I had thought of it earlier. Did not think of it till after I get a bunch of stuff established, so that was kind of tough. So there's going to be, um, let's see, uh, let's see, Do -do -do -do. hose anchor, hose anchor, um, cable. Yeah, so that's refueling, ground power, and then this one is going to be a panel. So that's the service panel. All right, and then you need to start in the open position because I need you to close. And then you need to move one to the left. Okay, so let's move this to the left. And then it will be start in the open position. So that will go like that. This is the stuff I find neat, kind of hiding this stuff is fun. All right, good. So that's going to be my uh, ground power system there. Single point refueling. Let's see if I can make it work without crushing this block and being annoying. I can always XML edit a wedge as well, so... Um, let's do this. Do that. Merge it. Okay, it's already merged. It's good. And then I'm going to cut this. All right. And then let's go. Oh, it has to start open, doesn't it? No, it doesn't have to start open. It can actually start closed. It can start closed. Okay, good. Start closed. That means I need to move this around. Now I just go negative value on it. Okay, and then let's go do a panel here. That'll be the activation panel for it. Uh, I'll do it right there as the activation panel for it. Because I need to be able to reach it while I'm on the ground, and I'm kind of a shorty in game, so. Check in the chat. Check in the chat. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, the whale meister is a whale meister or whale master. I do appreciate the kind words. Thank you. And generally, I'll do a flip switch. Okay. Um, single point uh, ground services. Ground service panel, flip this one, none, none, and none. All right, good. Uh, let's do door. And let's configure this. So All right, so that should do that. Let's check it, make sure it works. You go there, and where is this composite goes to there. Clunk, clunk, be the right one, thank you. All right, let's go check that, make sure we don't have any issues. You know, worst case, I have to XML edit one wedge in there. Just making sure it wasn't jittering, that it wasn't already causing me problems. Up, oh, it's it's causing problems. There it goes. Bye bye. Let's see. All right, let's fix it. All right. So, what do you look like here? So, why is that having struggles? Uh, I didn't go negative on the number. I thought I did, but I didn't. That would be why. If 
But did it? Did I not put a negative one in there? I did put a negative one in. Hmm. Yep. Let's go throttle. I always start with these with the throttle usually anyway to try to see what's up with them. All right, let's play with this. See what uh, I can get to work on this here. And let's see. Set this to really low number. Let's go like, I don't know, uh, negative 3% or something. Let's try to manually crank that door. Uh, I need to see where it's hitting. And then that will tell me uh, what I need to do to make that work. Whale Master, thank you. Yeah, that's what I, I thought figure it must be. That's a cool name. So you need to go negative. Where is it at? Negative right there. Nope, wrong way. This way. So let's see. This door should be opening. Now it's starting to have issues. And there we go. Okay. Let's see what the hell is up with this door. Why it's not act acting correctly. It's acting the fool instead. Alright, so what is up with this door? Why is this door not behaving itself? So it should rotate this way. Let's just... I hated having it backwards too. Alright, let's make it the right way anyway. Alright, so I don't know why that should be hitting. That should rotate freely out. Do I have it connected to something that it shouldn't be? I don't think so. The colors look good. That's good. Let's go test this again and see what's up. So I don't know why that's not rotating properly in that space. So are you rotating? You are, are you rotating? That's the question. See, it's acting all up. Why is it acting up? That's the question, I don't get it. Oh, I need to go positive on it anyway now. I changed it around. Let's go the other way. So it's trying to rotate. It just doesn't want to let go of those blocks for some reason. All right, let's screw with it here. I might be able to fix it here without too much hassle. All right, uh, cut out of there. Like that, and then let's go. All right, and let's go where you at there. Put you back in. Sometimes that's what you get trying to put these little hidden panels and nonsenses in is they don't they don't like to act right, so now let's try it again. I've done this a thousand times. I don't know why it's touching and causing spinning nonsenses. Why is this acting up is the question. Now it's not connected. Okay. Ugh. Don't like it when the detailing takes forever. Um, I'm moving the wrong panel. That's the door for the bathroom I just was moving. <laughs> Opening the bathroom door inside as I'm trying to... What's going on, Jan? Working on the old uh, airliner here. Did some flight tests, worked out well. I'll have to do some formation with you. Up, oh, wrong way. Let's go the right way. Ground services panel, there we go. All right. All right, nice. Let's get that fixed here. This should rotate around once I fix this. All right, good. Delay. I'm currently in panel mode, getting all my panels fixed up here. So what I can do as well is what I, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna test it once. If it acts the fool, I'm gonna make this an XML3 block because that will cause the least likelihood of having any physics interactions that I don't want. The last thing I want is something silly like a ground services door causing me problems. Cause that's just foolishness. Yep, see it's hitching, so I'll do a XML and that will fix it. 
And so we have ground services here. So we have single point refueling. We have electrical there and readouts controls. All right, good. Let's get that fixed here. Uh, let's save this. Let's do a new. Save you as regex3. Get this up so you guys can see it here. Vehicles. All right, so we have um, vehicles folder, Wedge X3. I pop it on every other monitor, but the one I want it on. Let's go to three, save, update. All right, good. Uh, get rid of you. Get rid of you. Let's load that back in. Let's go ahead and um, import that. I'm going to cause myself problems in two seconds, so I'm going to fix this here. Uh, let's see. All right, so that's just an extra uh, backup save in case I accidentally do something foolish and kill my save. I saved a bunch of this yesterday, but I've done a ton of work right now, so I don't want to screw it. Screw up the work and uh, end up screaming. Um, <laughs> All right, so this is going, this is my three XML wedge block here. I need to find where I'm at here. Zang, zing, grab you, you go in here like that. And then we wanna grab there. All right, and then that gives me a uh, pretty good XML spot that should hopefully function right. Let's go ahead and kill this. I think I got rid of the negative number. Let's double check it. Nope. And I actually don't want a negative. Let's go 0.75 or fold. Let's go 0.75. And then let's go, you go here. Let's test it. So I think what was happening was I hooked it up to the bathroom door and it was turning in and hitting the toilet and then spinning the jet. So, All right. Ground services panel, single point refueling right there. All right, good. So that's in. Would have liked it in the front of the wing, but whatever. Uh, it works well. All right, let's uh, look at our gauges here. I like the uh, release video for the Skylark Yon. That was cool. Saw Ollie working on that for a while. Okay, the fuels are working. Uh, Yon might appreciate this if he's still on there. Uh, fire test. Probably can't hear it from my seat with my headset on, but here. A little fire test there. All right, uh, let's see. Fuel is in now. I need crossfeed. All right, so the whole reason I was doing all that nonsense was I needed to get um, what I, what distracted me from the crossfeed was I need to make sure I can fuel everything up from my fuel ref from this section here. So I need to come in here, and that's why I kind of took a little break from the um, from doing the uh, what I was doing before with the trying to get that in. Okay, where are we at? Um, there. So I'm trying to find that fueling port. Should be here, right there. Okay, good. I need to refuel my APU. Well, oh, crap, crap, crap. Okay. Uh, made a mess here. Um. Hmm. So the issue I have now is I need to put in a separate diesel, and I want it here. So unfortunately, the devs have not seen fit to give us um. The ability to do uh, what do you call it they've not seen fit to give us the ability to run our anything off of jet fuel so I have to try to do um, what the hell is that so I can't run uh, I'll, I'll figure I'll get 
I'll be able to figure out the English language here in a minute. <laughs> uh, they, they have not allowed us to use um, jet fuel for modular engines to be able to run APUs or give us small turbines. So this would be my recommendation to the devs, which they won't listen to. But I would take an impeller, which what is an impeller? An impeller is a single stage axial turbine. So we take a single stage axial turbine and, you know, make this my single stage axial turbine and you feed in a this is what i would have the devs do simple easy should take them an afternoon go like that put a fuel on there you now have fuel you now have um air put one more node for exhaust and run out torque and then we'd have a single stage axial turbine simple 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 that's what i would do if i was if i were them Okay, so I need to put in a diesel filler for my APU. Crap, and this panel's where I want it now. Let's see if I can't work this. So. Symmetry's off, good. Okay, so the battery's the only thing really in the way. All right, I can make this work. I'm just gonna move my battery is all, really. Is there another place for this battery that's not annoying to me? I mean, like in the in the inner recesses of this sucker now. I need to move my batteries all. Stick the battery in here somewhere else. And then I can make this work. All right. Sorry, I'm flying around the build, kind of probably nauseating everybody, but we'll get there eventually here. All right, that's in. So that's my B battery back in all right good so that's fine uh this needs to move one left this will actually be perfect where it's sitting that's going to sit right here right above the diesel tank or yeah the diesel tank and then i'll loop right in and plug into it so that will actually work really well so that is uh that's one reason why i actually want to put this in the back was uh, for that reason alone all right so that's good there um so i'm going to move my xml block here and instead of XML it out to four, I don't need to XML it out to four. I just need to move it one left. And then I will go like this. And then I can delete this one if I like. So I don't have to, but I did. Um, and then like that. Where's this? Where's the collision here? Did I get it? I don't think I got it. Okay. All right, let's try to get it, get the collision grabbed here. So the collision's right there. Let's try to get this merged. All right, there's merged. And then need to kill this. And then we're going to put a... So, all right, that's good. And so that should work now. And then what I want to do is go ahead and this is going to be my diesel. And so what I should do is move my jet to the right and which I'll do in a second. Oh my God, I'm getting stuck in the build again. I hate that. All right, and then this is coming back up to fill my diesel. Again, I really wish we could run some of these modulars on um, jet fuel just to be able to simulate simulate it. You know, they could make it so that it's just really fuel inefficient, whatever they want to do for balance, quote unquote balancing. But it's just like, let us run, let us have a little bit more versatility so we can do things like, um, you know, proper APUs in, in vehicles would be nice. All right, so that fills that. All right, that's good there. All right, let's get in here where I was making myself nauseous before. And so all this I want out. And so what I want to do is I don't want to, you know, you'd accidentally uh, fill the wrong thing in real life. So for human factors reasons, plus I want to get my hose to fill my uh, jet fuel over to the right more. So we do this. And then grab you, cut you, you go over here. I hate these arrows. There we go. 
Cut you. So we se separate it by power so that you kind of have to, you know, this, this is something they do in real life is that by keeping things you don't want to accidentally, say, connect a hose to the wrong thing, put the wrong fuel in something, you would separate them by a couple things. You actually have to kind of think about it before you do it. If they're right next to each other, you just say, oh, yeah, like somebody comes up and talks to you and you're trying to fill something with, with uh, diesel and you accidentally put gasoline in it and then... Um, you know, you're stripping all the uh, lubrication of the engine, you're in trouble. So uh, right here is perfect. This is where my fuel comes in for my engines. And so I should be able to plumb right into that for this hose. Just kind of got to get in there underneath here. So let's see, right there. So let's grab this. I think it's right here. All right, right there. So that's good. Um, that plums right into my fuel systems. That was that was lucky. I didn't think I didn't think it was gonna be this easy to get it plumbed in. So having a moment of luck here. All right, and then you go like this. Nice. All right, so that is in. Jan released a new new cool plane. If uh, you guys should check it out, it's top of the workshop at the moment. So you guys should check that out. That was enjoyable plane. I liked testing that out. That you, you're my bathroom door. Okay, so I'm under my lav door right there. And then, so that's kind of a hollow space. I'm going to put in a block there, and then this will go in that gap. Nice. So this actually wasn't too bad getting this plumbed in for single point refueling. I was kind of worried about that. Um, I don't have any tutorials for XML. Um, I, it's mostly in my videos. I'll have to make a tutorial at some point. Um, it's not that challenging. Yeah, well, let's not put it that way. The basics of it are pretty basic and easy. The getting into it, like the really more challenging stuff of like, you know, it, it's it's not hard. It just takes practice, and that's kind of the thing of it. It's, it just takes a little bit of practice to get to going on. But essentially, you saw what I did with the notepad was. Uh, I put in one of the X values to so like quickly show you here. Games, where is it? So this is a utility from Strunner, which is good. Um, so like, say for example, uh, what I just did, I took a, oh, not a pyramid, where is wedge? Here's a wedge. So this is what I just took was this, um, was that wedge and I made it three wide. So all you do is this first value, if that's three, um, so three, and notice now it takes up three blocks. So I needed that to be three blocks wide. So that, so what happens is when you XML edit it, the it keeps the collisions. So for example, this here, this one block, uh, originally has one collision. So it's like there's a collision right here. And then if you make it bigger, so like say we made it three wide, it um, now has a collision still right there. So the reason I did that was I didn't want a collision here so that the blocks weren't hitting each other. Because if I had a block next to it, I can't have two collisions in, inside of each other. That's when you get physics problems is, you know, you have two immovable objects trying to bang into each other. So by XML editing that, it makes it like that. So if I want to do 15, I could do, I have to click it. This utility doesn't let me type it in very well. But say I wanted it 15 blocks wide. I can make that one wedge 15 blocks wide while the collision is still sitting right here. There's no other collisions. And so, for example, most people will, you will use them on Windows. And so if you do, I probably have to click this down, but like, see, we have a, um, so like here's a one, was it a three by two window? So you can go in this utility and you can click each um, node and you can kind of test what it does. And so like, I don't know, make that, like see that you wouldn't want to do. And then, you know, you want to, you can make the window taller. So for example, like say you want a really tall window. The issue is the collision is still where it was. So if you wanted to make something watertight, it will no longer be watertight. So people would generally use this for say, um, you know, the glass on, um, you know, planes or whatever. So you see you can make the window enormous, but the collision is still going to be tiny. So uh, here, I'll put in a quick link to um, Strunner's utility here. So th this is kind of the basis. You know, once you kind of get good at it, you can just look at the numbers. And then so I will um, 
So then what you would do is, so what I did was I saved a block, and then I went and I went to my data folder where my vehicles are saved, and right here is the wedge. So it says wedge times three is what I named it. Click on the notepad or the um, word pad or whatever, and then what you do is you come in here and these R values here, you replace them with what the utility says. And so I just knew off the top of my head that if I made that a three, that I would have that. So like right here is where I edit it. See, I edit it to a three. And so I know that's going to be on that axis three wide. And so that's really, it's, it's, it's not, it, the basics of it are pretty simple. You know, it gets a lot more complicated. And then you can do things like go in there and change things like doing, um, you can change things like XML grip, where you go in, you find the grip value of a tire, and you just increase it, which I often do to make them more realistic. All right, so we have our diesel connected for APU. We have our electrical, which is going to be for our uh, our ground power. This is going to be control. I don't know. I'm just going to do dials on this. So this is going to be uh, number one fuel, number one fuel, um, gauge, vert. Uh, zero. What am I running in there? 14,000 pounds a side. I think 14,000 pounds a side. Let's do 15 on either one. Uh, let's see, number two fuel, number two fuel. Uh, let's gauge vertical zero to 15,000 pounds on that side. And then uh, what do I want to do? Pumps and lights, I think. Pump and lights. So I think I'll do that. Um, so this one here will be pump. Uh, pumps. Uh, do I want... I don't think I... I'm not going to bother turning on the fuel pumps. Let's do here. I want... Um, let's go ahead and do volts. So this is going to be the volts off of the ground power. Uh, ground GPU volts. Dial 1, negative 1. That's going to be 3. Yeah, I'm just going to do these all reads. And then this one will be battery. And that's going to be a um, gauge horizontal 0 to 100 for 100%. And so that will be that. And then I'll just go ahead and... Make these amber. And then I'll do it off the door. But uh, that just kind of gets that. So I got... We'll see you later. Have a good one. Have a good holiday. Thanks for uh, joining in. Appreciate you. Uh, that's Yeah, that's cool to have a... Yeah, I always love that tank in um, Command and Conquer. But um, I just... I'm not, not huge on tanks. It's just like... Other things I'd rather do, you know, like I like seeing them. I like playing with them. Like uh, Endo, Professor Geronimo, and I played for like eight hours yesterday, and we did uh, some sub hunt. Uh, we were doing; they were in tanks, and I was in a plane. Uh, this jet, not yet. This is going to be boring name. <laughs> you don't get a cool name for an airliner. This is going to be. Uh, it's. I don't know if it's going to be Pat Brand, but it's going to be something. Um, and it's going to be a boring name, you know, like something, you know, be like, you know, like Canada Air with CRJ, you know, 200, 400 or ERJ. Uh, we had ERJ 135, 140, 145. It's going to be something like that. You know, it's going to be boring. <laughs> not not going to be, you know, the, um, the Illustra or something like that. <laughs> let's see what else we got here. That's done. Okay. So let's get back in the cockpit. Um, I wanted to get that, that. Okay, I know what I want to do now. So these two here are my feeds. So these are coming in from the single point refueling to fill both tanks right here. I next need to be able to cross feed. So let's find a place to cross feed. So right here, I was going to make this complicated as I usually do, which is give me a headache lately. I'm trying not to overcomplicate stupid stuff. I'm trying to minimize that. So I'm going to do it simple here. Uh, well, that, see, that might, um, anyone know off the top of their head, I think a pipe has a reduced collision, right? 
Yeah, see, X, XML is all about just playing with it. You know, it's it it's taken me, you know, it just takes you some time to get to get good at it. If anyone knows off the top of their head if a pipe has a reduced collision, I'm pretty sure it does, but I'm not 100%. I think, yeah, I think you can flow water through a pipe. Uh, so, you know, alongside a pipe. Uh, let's do one here. I'm trying to think how to not screw this up. Because I can't put this in front of stuff. Like, see, this... Is the spawner going to give me issues? If I think... Let's, let, I'll do a quick test here. I think if the if the pipe has a reduced collision, I think we'll be all right if I do it this way. So if I'm reading fuel after this because I put something right in front of my spawner, um, this, this that will tell me it worked. All right, so that is um, starboard to port. And then we're going to go the opposite way. What's that cutting into that? That will cause me a problem here. Okay. What are you? You're not going to cause me issues, are you? You're not. Okay, good. All right, I'm just checking, making sure I'm not going to cause myself a bunch of issues here. All right. So this is my cross feed here. And so I was going to overcomplicate it by valves and a single pump, but I'm just going to make it easy. So cross, cross feed is going to be like that. Let me see. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, Hamish, yeah, that's what I was figuring. Yeah, I couldn't remember. I just didn't want to have to go back. Thank you. appreciate that for letting me know. Yeah, you know, I don't know if they'll ever do a another pass on um, on too many weapons. There's just so much other stuff to do. Like, people are like, oh, give us sniper rifles, give us this. And that's certainly cool, but it's like... You know, so many other parts of the community that want stuff that are just not, um, you know, war-related. And it's like, you know, people have been really asking for fishing for a long time. If you were to tell them, you know, sorry, I can't have fishing. we got to put in sniper rifles. It would be annoying. So, I, you know, they threw us a bunch of weapons. And, yeah, more weapons would always be cool. But I think that's down the line compared to things like fishing, getting some more industry in, um, you know. But, you know, I'm certainly not opposed to any of it. 1718. Okay. Let's see, uh, where are we at here? So let's go. Uh, output cross to P and cross to S. So that's going to cross feed our fuel. S1718. Just trying to remember all my numbers here. Starting to get. Try to visualize the panel in my head. Sometimes I can't remember it all. Where are we at? There we go. Nope. Where are we at there? Cross to starboard. So this is going to go to starboard. This is cross to port. There we go. Really long ah uh, when I'm talking to the passengers. I tried to, uh, yeah, semi-realistic sails would be cool. Yeah, like sail, you know, I think those things would be coming a lot you know, more than weapons, you know, or, or more weapons. You know, sails would be nice. Um, fishing, there's a lot of stuff that people are really looking for. Like, I would like some more miniaturized parts. Like, I was talking, like, a single-stage axial turbine so that we can do APUs. Um, you know, sounds, definitely. They, You know, they're getting really harassed by because of the sounds. So let's try a crossfeed. So see, we're, we have, we're low on starboard. Okay, why'd that stop is the question. Oh, we're at max fuel, so it probably can't cross feed very much. Yeah, so we're just, I maxed the tanks out. So looking at like 13.1, so we'll go 13.5 on the dials here. 
So 13,500 pounds per side. It's going to change as I add uh, microcontrollers in. We'll get more fuel in there. I don't really need more fuel, but uh, let's see. Thirteen five, and we'll make the backs the same for now. <laughs> yeah, for a while there, I thought everybody was dead because I, uh, you know, I didn't see the chat move, and I was whenever the chat gets quiet, I'm afraid that uh, something happened, and and I need to reboot YouTube or something. So it's good when people are yakety yakety. I know that it's working. All right, so finally get to that. So you see how you see how I get derailed. Like, you know, I wanted to finish these gauges, and I'm like, you know what, I really need to do is hook up the fuel to make sure I know how to run right because I could have run into a problem there and just try to knock, knock the problems out. All right, so we have cross feeds enabled. Lights will be done later. Fire is done. Hydraulics. So hydraulics are going to be faked. We have hydraulic loop A and B. Um, so hydro is 11, 12. 21, 22. 11, 12, 21, 22. 11, 12, 21, 22. Okay, good. So let's uh, quickly bang together hydraulics. The nice thing about hydraulics is they are presently um, faked. So I'm going to... Do I overcomplicate these or not? Trying to decide if I if I overcomplicate this crap or not. That's that's what I'm doing. So let's get let's get our banging the panels and then our banging the sand and then I will decide if I want to overcomplicate this or not. All right, so I think I'm gonna overcomplicate it. <laughs> Classic Russian problem. Not enough gung to pr yeah. <laughs> let's see. Uh, what are we talking? Eleven and twelve are my hydro pumps. So all you really do in a modern aircraft is you're just turning on the systems and they're self-regulating. You're not having to do much with them. So for right now, I'm not going to screw with them too much. Um, I will. What, so what I'll do is they're going to, essentially when I turn on the hydraulic systems, they're going to build up pressure. And then what I'll do is as I move the control surfaces, um, I'm going to put in a port essentially. So what it will do is... Um, as I move the control surfaces, it will just gently take off hydraulic pressure. And uh, that's that's all it's going to do. But um, it's kind of a, it's just a cool little fun thing. But, you know, you'll never notice it. And it's one of those things that, you know, it's a detail that, you know, if you're just a super nerd, you'll, you'll kind of see. Wait, uh, what do I want here? Zero one, I think, enabled 3,000, 3,000 PSI. Is that all set in, in? Yep, that's good. Okay. And then I need to write out where are we at here. Write that. And 2122. 2122. These are going to write here. Okay. All right, so that is my hydraulics there. So all that's going to do is build up the pressure. When I turn these on, they're going to build up pressure, essentially. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, wasn't there a German tank that uh, didn't have any sort of rotation? It had to, or there, yeah, I remember there was one. There were a couple tanks that had to do pitch like that. So what I'm going to do here is on this one, just to make them look a little different, so this is going to be 2995. This one's going to be, I don't know, um, 2987. So they look a little bit better. Um, okay, that's good. Let's update this. Let's go in there. Let's index the panels, and let's click on the hydraulic system and see if this registers correctly. 3,000. All right, they're already indexed. Nice. All right, so we let's go sit over here and do it. Up. 
Come on, get in there. All right. Um, there we go. So hydraulic pressure is building. That's mighty slow. Yeah, that's slow. Okay. We got to build up three thousand psi, so that's slow. That might even be slow right there. Might have to go ten or. I think 100 hundred's excessive. It's only 30 presses to get 3,000 psi. So, so it's also the engines should be need to be on for the hydraulic pumps to go. But um, there we go. So we're starting to build hydraulic pressure. Yeah, that shouldn't take too long. And then you've shut off system B. You notice it will stop building pressure. Yeah, that's not bad. That will so turn those on before we take off. We'll have to make sure that we're at max pressure. What? Why is what? What is? Uh, why is what so far apart? All right. So hydraulic pressure is building up. That's fine. That will give us a little bit of a reason. The legs on the aircraft? What are you talking about? Oh, the character? I don't know. All right, so that's in. Let's go ahead and save this here to the no touchy is no touchy. I'm not touching that. So <laughs> that's there for on purpose not to be touched. All right, let's go ahead in here. So you, I love it when I can start deleting crap that is stuck on there for just, all right, so hydraulics are done. Um, let's go ahead and do environmentals and heat, because this is going to be an Arctic beast. This is what the whole job of this is going to the Arctic. So the way our heating system worked, um, uh, when I was flying was we had our own system. Don't do that. Oh, that's, that could be a problem. Uh, where I cut it. Nope. That's all right. Um, I actually, I don't really want the heater to show, so put it under here. Uh, we had our own uh, climate system up front because you didn't want your pilots to pass out. So, And then they had a separate. So we essentially had two packs, two pneumatic air conditioning kits. One was just for the cockpit and the other one was for all the back. And you did that because you didn't need, um, you didn't want the pilots to pass out. What are you? You're something, aren't you? You're right there. Okay, let me look. I thought I had a slot in here that I could slot this in and not be a pain. Is it in the center here? I think it's in the center here. I can stick it um, and not have it be a pain. What are you? Are you anything? No. Beautiful. Right here. Nice. All right, that's where the other heater's going. Just kind of spacing them out. I need to worry about overlap a little bit. Let me see where we're at here. Just reading chat, chat, chat. Okay. All right, so let's get this heating and climate system in. All right, um, so I didn't check the numbers, but that's all right. I'll do that in a second. So I, have, I need two more here. All right, that's the controller for that. And then that's going to go up, down, counter. And so um, uh, Celsius, I have to convert everything to Celsius. It used to be better at converting to Celsius. So 15. So we'll do our, our uh, reset value of 15. We'll do a minimum of, uh, let's see. Ten, and we'll say max will be seventy-five. We say twenty-four. Uh, interval will be point zero zero one. Enabled. Up, down, and then. Is 
I think the best way to do this is I don't want to. I don't want to click on all the time because I hate it when it comes on, off, on, off, on, off. Um, I'm trying also not to make this overly complex and annoying. Let me see. Yeah, I'm, I wouldn't tell the passengers we had an engine failure. They're not hearing about it till we get on the ground. I don't need them back there being a pain. I'd rather them be uh, just tell them we're going back. And uh, I wouldn't even tell them we're going back. Just turn around, go back and land. Because I don't need them freaking out and uh, punching the flight attendant. So, so that is where it goes. Ends up with them back there fighting the flight attendant for some reason or trying to pull the door open or something stupid. Better just to leave them be. Let's see. So let's see. Um, cabin temp. See if cabin temp is less than nope greater. So if cabin temp, if this number is, it didn't really matter. But um, so if, essentially, if so, my if my set is greater than what the cabin temperature is, kick the heater on. It's going to do with a PID. I'm not going to go into it. That's good. Okay. All right. So if my set is greater than the cabin temperature, we're going to bang the heaters on. Keep it simple. Yeah, we're at here. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to do electrical as I go, and I keep forgetting to do it. So I'll try to grab that in a second. All right, and uh, let's go ahead and you're not going to hide this. It's not going to be a pain. Um, this needs to be blocked. Just stick it somewhere in the galley, maybe, or. Right there. All right, that's in. Plug that. Cabin temp. Let me see what's going on here. People are always after the flight attendants. They're, uh, yeah, flight attendants have the hardest job. They're stuck back there with people who are punchy and annoying. Flight attendants have been punched before. So it's better just to keep them in the dark, frankly. Passengers don't need to know there's an engine failure. All they're going to do is freak out. Passengers need to know you're going back. They don't, I, you know, you might tell them they're going, going back to the airport, but. Last thing you want is then the flight doesn't get a ding. Passion want to know why we're going back to the airport. So I would tell them nothing. And on the ground is, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we had to return to the airport. We had a uh, we had a mechanical issue. Uh, we're back safe on the ground. That's all they need to know. All you're doing is causing potential for them to freak out. And it's better to have them sitting in their seats unaware than to have them uh, causing a bunch of problems. I'm just reading some chat. I hate an onion like an apple. <laughs> yeah, you, you're not opening that door while it's pressurized. Everybody thinks they can rip that door open while it's pressurized. It's not happening. Yeah, it's 
you got to think you're at 7.8 psi. So let's say 7 psi. Let's say the the square inches on that door is, I don't know, 10 by 10. So what's that? 10 by 10, so that would be 120. No, it's not 10 by 10. Let's say it's 3. So you're talking 24 by, let's say you're talking uh, 70, 24 by 70. You know, so, I don't know, so say 3 times 7. So say you have 210 times 7. So you're talking, you're having, you're having you know, probably a, at least a ton keeping that door shut. So you'd have to be able to lift a ton just to get that door open at the very, you know, you're not getting that door open minimal, minimum, you know, ton sitting on that door. That's not just not happening. You're not getting that door open. People think they're going to rip the door open. It's just pressurized. You're not getting that door open. You know, that's why it doesn't have a lock. Is If people could rip that door open, there'd be a lock on the door. Because people could get the door open. If there's any doubt somebody could get that door open, they'd put a lock on it. Um, 16 and 26. Okay, 16, 26. Sixteen. Yeah, there. Sixteen and twenty-six. Did I get a message? Let's see. What is this message here? Okay. Yeah, messages everywhere. All right. All right, so that is in 1626. That gives me cabin temp. I need to read out to the dial. So that's the next thing to go. So my set temp. So we used to have, we could control the cabin temp. What did I put for max value? No way I did 30. Uh, what did I do? 20, I do 24, 24 max, 24. And then I think I had 10. 10, 24 and 10, I think, is where I set it. Yeah. Yeah, we had a, we had, um, we could control the heat in the back, and then we could also switch it to flight attendant so they could control the cabin. And they, we could give it like an extra 10 degrees if we controlled it. And so half the time the flight attendant was calling us, like, can you, can I have control? Can you get, can you take control back? And I was like, oh my God, pick one. Because it was like, you know, we're right busy in the middle of something, and they're like, can I have the heat back? And it's like, dude, busy, busy, busy. Uh, let's see. So cabin temps here needs to be, did I just forget it? I think it was 15. What are you, you're not connected, are you? Or you're not, you can go. I think it's 15. Let's double check it. So I don't really care what the outside air temperature is or the temp because I can read it off of the uh, OAT, but I will. All I care about is what is this temp reading? Right, let's see. Um, right there. Cabin temp 28.5. Oh, that's reading cabin temp. I want to read what I'm setting it at. I want to read set temp, so that's what I want to read. I don't care about what the cabin temp's reading. I care about what the set temp is reading. That's what I care about. Okay. There we go. All right, that's better. Yeah, I should be able to kick these heaters on by putting set temp high. That way, if I want them always on, essentially, I'm going to just crank it. So there we go. So that needs to be sped up about 10 times, maybe. Yep, more than that. I have like a 30, uh, 30 button presses. Yeah, so let's go. That's good. Did I just change the right one? Yep. Okay, good. I did my standard like throttle number and it's way too low. All 
That's better. Yep, let's go up there, see if we can't bang a heater on. We are in the uh in the hot zone too, so I don't know if I'll be able to kick one on. Should be able to kick one on. You on? Heating element falls. Mm -hmm. What's the uh, what's the temp out here? I have it set to 24. 28. <laughs> Killing me here. Set it to 30 just so I can get it to kick on. Want to just test it? So. I figured that was going to happen. All right. So that's set two degrees hotter than outside. So let's hopefully that kicks a heater on. Excuse me. Thank you. Walk in here. Yep. So that's that's giving me heat. All right. Good. So that's working. Uh, let's see. What else? What else? Let's uh, go back through the panel and let's check on this. Uh, save this to not no touchy. Now let's go back in. So making really good progress on this. My overhead panel is almost done. Um, that is the big accomplishment. So overhead panel, there's two blanks. Saving those for this and that. Um, cabin lighting is probably going on the FO panel side because the captain has um, steering control for the nose wheel. Okay, I'm going to catch a bunch of out here. Let's see. Eating onions, ripping doors. <laughs> Were you sure there was a, well, it could, yeah, it was, it was on, on the ramp. People freak out, uh, like, they used to freak out in Fort Worth all the time because they had a, they would do uh, light on, they had a fake airplane and they would light it on fire to, um, for firefighter training. And, uh, Go light the plane on fire, and then everybody freak out as they're getting ready to take off, and they've they're um you know you get everybody uh freaked because <laughs> they lit a plane on fire. Uh, let's see, save you. Let me keep reading chat here. Merry Christmas, Whale Master. Yeah, I I never understood why a captain would tell people what the hell is going on. Like, with, with that much detail, like they're missing something. You know, they, they don't need to know. Tell them, you know, just tell them... Uh, you know, because then they try to get involved. You tell them that, you know, we have a mechanical issue and maintenance is on the way. Because what people will do is you tell them, oh, there's a screw missing out of the nose gear. And then people are like, well, I have to get to this wedding. Just leave without it. And it's like, can't leave without it. And now you're sitting there explaining to somebody who has no clue what they're talking about, you know, what's going on. It's like the better thing to do is just tell them you've got a mechanical issue and we're waiting on maintenance. That's it. And we had guys who wanted to tell them every story and, you know, tell them every detail. It's like, dude, just tell them it's a mechanical. We got maintenance on the way. That's all you need to tell them, you know, and got guys will tell them all the details. It's like, and then you got somebody, they want to interact with us. It's like, you know, a lot of people don't know that the pilots aren't getting paid. The flight attendants are not getting paid if the plane's not off the, off the gate. So we're not getting paid. Now we're fielding questions because the captain was just like, told him something. It's like, dude. I'm not getting paid. I don't want to. I don't don't want to talk to them. You know, it's just like, you know, I don't let 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 them leave us alone for a little bit here while we're not getting paid, and then just tell them it's mechanical. But I don't know. Some of the captains like to get chatty with the pastors. It's like, you know, do it do it yourself. But now I'm fielding questions. You know, that that stuff used to annoy me. You know, they just, the pastors don't need to know the details of it because all they're going to be is they'll, they'll call and complain and they'll be like, 
you know, I waited there for three hours for a screw. You could have left without it. Well, nope, you can't. The FAA says you can't leave without that screw. That's a required item. You have to have maintenance come out. You have to have the airplane checked. It's all in the book. And it's like there was no reason to tell the passengers that little detail. There just was no reason. Uh, where's my tail? Where's my white nav going? Hmm. I don't know. Do I? That looks, I don't like that without that. Um, need a white nav. I need like a one block. I can put a, um, you have one by twos the whole way there. That's kind of killing me. Let's see. Yeah, I just don't know why some of the captains would tell the passengers their whole life stories. Like, some of the guys just loved to talk to them. It was like, it was a big thrill of the job for them, and I wasn't a big fan of it. It was like, you know, tell them, you know, because I used to hate it when, like, you're trying to sleep on the plane, and then you get some chatty captain trying to tell you something. It's like, dude, leave him alone. Let him sleep. Ugh. I don't like how that looks at all. Eh, let's see. We'll go without a white nav for now. I'll figure it out later. Do need a beacon, though. Nice once you get a bunch of micro micro uh, controllers, you can just go ahead and light stuff up with. Makes it that much easier. Um, let's see. It is uh, inspired by DC nine. Uh, you know, the uh, it's it's kind of more of the size of like uh, Ember one forty five, but it is uh, DC nine like air stairs and stuff like that. All right, let's see. Um, Lights, lights, lights. Kind of did myself dirty on lights here. Um, what's my clearance on this? Clearance on this should be good. So I have a thought on this. <laughs> Trying to make this more complicated than it needs to be. Let's see where we're at. Um, catching up with chat again. SRPs. Uh, it's going to be, I, I have to figure out a custom paint job to do on it. So, a thought. This is going to be a pain, but I might do it anyway. Uh, so, one of the thoughts I had was this. Um, so, I stick this, like, come on, behave yourself there. Land your light. So, one of the thoughts I have is this. Stick that on there for taxi light. The issue is now, this has to rotate 90 degrees before it can suck into the well. Um, let's test that. So putting the sucker back up on jack stands. The cool factor is there, and the taxi light will move with us as we turn, which is uh, sweet. The issue is I now have to test it out and see if I can get it to work. So let's get that going. All right, so where are we at here? It's actually not that difficult. I already have it plugged in. I just need to change a value. All right, so right here, gyro yaw comes in when I switch my gear. This needs to rotate 90. So let's go to a 1, and I guarantee it will be a negative 1 is what I need because I've typed in 1. So let's check it. All right, so get the gear tested. 
So that light will go there. Oh no, it turned the right way. <laughs> hey, look at that. Oh my god, I got on the first try without any nonsense or fighting or crap or so see it's sitting there in the well. So that actually oh, do I need those is the question. Yeah, I'd like to get rid of some of this. Okay, good. I can get rid of some of that, I think. Uh go ahead. You can yep. Yeah, ask a question. Let's go like Let's do that. All right, and then let's go across. What are we looking at here? A, a one. There we go. Let's do this. So there's my well there. Okay, so that's welding. Uh, how many? Okay, so big pivot on gear. Um, the reason to use a big pivot on gear is these doors. So the doors are not timed. The doors are based on gear position. So as this wheel moves, the doors will always open and close correctly. So what this does here is this sends the current rotation to these gear doors. And so whenever this moves, those will uh, operate. So let's here, I'll show you what I mean. So if I take a throttle, and I hook it here. This is the best way to do gear. So you take this, I'm gonna replace this value here, my rotation target. And I will go real slow on this. Let's go down to like 5%. Now watch what happens when I work the gear. So as I move the gear up, okay, now it's not gonna work for some reason. <laughs> Let's see what's up with it. I think I have it. Okay, so see the gear doors just opened. As this moves, the gear doors will open. The the problem is this moving so slow that it's um it's not going to open the gear doors right. But let me check it. I'm moving it the wrong way, I think. Let me let me move it the other way. All right, let me just move put this both directions so I can go both directions. I can't recall which directions turning. Go to like 10 15 percent is fine. Let's look at this. So, anyways, so the gear position is what operates those doors, so it should be positive. And so those doors will auto. Uh, so these two gear door will open and close via the position, so that way the gear doesn't get jammed up. So I can show you without doing this here, but I don't know why it's misbehaving now. It's, it's probably because uh, the way I hooked it up. Let's do it. Yeah, let's get rid of this. So I'll show you with just the gear hooked up correctly. I've already tested it. It's already running. So let me find it. Uh, where are we at here? Should go to the backs so right here. Gear pivots. So right here. So watch when I raise the gear. So those doors are not timed. So if this if this wheel was to get hung up, so you'll often see people who do it timed. What happens is as the gear goes up. And they do timing. If this ever gets jammed or in your multiplayer session or something, the doors will close too early. They'll open too late. By doing it this way, they always open on time. They always close on time. And that way you don't have to worry. I can also change the speed at which the gear come up and down. And the doors still work. They never, you know, they always work. The only difference is you might have to have them move up a little bit faster to do certain things. So let's watch here. So you see how they... Go up and then the gear close. The doors close. Um, I don't have any timing. Like I can put my gear right back down. There's no timing there. Okay, so it's getting hung up now with the up uh, oh, now. It closed. Let me see. Get out of there. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. So the doors will auto uh, open and close. So that's why I do that uh, big pivot. So I would have liked to do big pivot back here, but I didn't have the space, so I couldn't do it. And then I need to XML a block here. So let's go ahead and let's see uh, where are we at here. Uh, I want a two block, two block. So here's an XML two block. And then what I do is plug this XML two block in here. 
or I just cut it, and now that will cover the hole. I used to I used to rotate something. So like what the other trick you can do is rotate a block into the space, but all that does is give you a chance for the gear to get gummed up. And so by doing it this way, it covers it, and you don't have to worry about it. The other thing you can do here is to make this even easier is if you go like this. Um, like that, and then take, this actually makes your gear even easier. Do I have a two wedge? That's a three wedge. Three wedge, three wedge is what I want. It's a long wedge, so here's a, so here's a, so here's a uh, two wedge, if I can find where it appeared. So the other trick you can do is if you put these at the front of your gear doors, that will give it a little bit of extra time so that it doesn't try to crush your gear doors. So you go up like this, put that in there, and then that will give you, see this has no collision right here, so the wheel can come up and hit that. Like this side, I don't need to worry about it. So I actually can go back on that. Okay, so I don't need it on that. Let's go ahead and save this, and I'll make myself something for this. I don't really need it, but I'm going to put it in there anyways just in case. So we'll do another quick XML thing. I, I don't have one of these as a, as a three by, so I need one anyway. So let's go ahead and we'll save that. Okay, it's a one by two, three wide. And I'll bring it up. All right, so we have the just open that file up. Uh, where are we at? Why is it R negative one here? Mm -hmm. That's weird. Uh, let's see. I just screwed it up when I built it. Let's uh, go new. Let's do. I should be doing it like this. Put it ahead of it, which it probably doesn't like. Let's try it now. Uh, let's check it with Strunner's utility, make sure I don't screw it up. So I'll go ahead and find it. I don't know if there's a one by two wedge, but it's the same principle. Yeah, we could just do a regular, there's a one by two wedge here. So right here, um, just triple it like that, or make, I have to do it manually. And you can see now the first value should be a three. I don't know why it's coming up as a negative one. It's probably which direction it's facing, but let's make it a three. Worst case, I'll change it. Go back in here. Let's go ahead and open it. Um, wedge one, uh, where is it? Did it just save it or not? Didn't call it a wedge is why. And so you now see it's wider. So that's, um, now let's open it back up here. Let's bring that in. All right, so this is the other trick you can do is where if your gear is going to hit the uh, the door at the front, if you put in a wedge like this, see this one goes invisible because I screwed up a number. So the orientation was wrong. So let's go back in. I got to fix this. So go to this and start a new vehicle. So I think the wedge has to face the other way is the problem. It's facing backwards, so it, it's that's what the problem is. Let's try it this way. All right, so see how that number is not negative anymore? That was negative because I had the wedge facing the wrong direction. Now I should be able to make it a three, save it, get back in there. One nice thing that, you know, that I really love about this game is that it um, it lets you do the stuff live like this. Um, like back many, many years ago, I used to do a lot of, uh, you know, uh, I used to mod 
flight sim, you know, and I mostly just put in things like different buildings and stuff like that, make cool airports. And the issue was you had to reboot the game every time you did something. So like, see for this, this is a, these are our two by wedges. And so I'm going to do is move this up here. Now there's no collision hitting the tire. You see how I can go in the tire and there's no collision. So what that allows me to do is it makes it really easy so that um, the, the wheel can't hit anything to start with. And that way um, I don't have to worry about it. So let's merge this. Oh, come on, man. Did I cut something out? No, it shouldn't be cut out. Um, get off symmetry here and try to merge this here. All right, so I'm going to have to cut this out and cut this out. Then I have to put a helper block in. So let's grab a helper block right there. Now let's merge the helper block. That's kind of the trick to do it. And so now see that's an XML piece. So there's no collision right here. And so the wheel, when it comes up, shouldn't have, be able to hit anything. Not that it was earlier, but that should make it even easier. So let's try that thing I was showing you um, before of how the gear works. It should be easier now without that collision in the way. So these are some of the things I've, you know, I used to not do any XML. And I've started doing more just because you, you'll get into physics issues where you hit stuff and it's better if you can get away from that. So like with this, I can easily fix some of my physics issues by not having things hit. Like you'll be flying around trying to put your gear up and your plane will freak out and it'll frustrate you. By doing it this way, it doesn't happen. So let's go real slow. So now as the gear gets back to a certain position, I don't know why it's not going to work right now, but. Oh, you know what it is? <laughs> I know what it is. Okay. This is why. Uh, let's go toggle. I, I'm not unlocking the gear is the problem. Uh, it's in the microcontroller, unlocks the gear. The gear's not unlocking. So I probably didn't need all that, but I wanted to do it anyway. So right here, I need to release the hard point. So the hard point was locked up. That's why I couldn't move it. So here, if I go unlock, now watch the gear. Pressing the wrong button somehow. Okay, so see how the doors open? The doors are 100% dependent upon the position of this pivot. So let's say your door was moving really slow, or your gear was moving really slow. The doors would stay open. A lot of people do timing. If anything causes this wheel to hang up, like say there's a light stuck on the side of it, um, those doors are not going to stay open. They'll close on it, and then you're screwed. And so you notice right here, what would happen is the, the doors would try to close and could cause physics problems. Now, if I reset the gear and opened it back up, um, you would then be able to, um, you see it like you could recycle the gear. And so what's happening now, see, as soon as it goes back in position, the door is shut. So that's why I like those big pivots. It, it triggers the doors. It's not timed at all. Everything is 100% on position of the gear for the doors so I could open them close them like you if you do timing sometimes if you cycle your gear too fast it will screw up your timing and the doors will crush the gear and then you're in you're stuck you have to re re uh, load it in the workbench by doing it this way you don't have that issue so what's happening now is it's not rotating because I am signaling it differently okay and then it's doing the flick thing now so right here is gear pivot, so that goes back here. Um, then toggle, so the hard point release, that was what was causing me issues was the hard point release. But that's uh, that's what that's all about. So do one gear rotation just to show you again. But uh, it's all based on the position of the wheel, which, um, so like in real life, you'll actually have position sensors or it actually physically will suck the gear up. There'll be like these hooks and loops and so as the gear comes up, the hook will grab the loop of the doors and actually pull the door shut. So that way you don't have to, um, and it always works. So see how now I didn't have to worry about, like when I added that light, it changed the timing of the wheels turning. If I want to make these wheels go, you know, slower, I don't have to worry about changing the timing of the doors. The doors will always work. That's why I do it that way. So let's get rid of these jack stands. So that is done. But it's you see, with by putting in those XML blocks, it just really saves you a bunch of headache with because if like if the gear is moving too fast, it will hit the door. Then you have to change your timing by putting that 
XML in, I don't have to worry about any of that as well. So, All right, let's see. Let's keep going through the panel. All right, we are getting pretty pretty well on this uh, lighting. We're still in lighting. Let's finish up the lighting. That's where I was last before I got before I distracted myself. Uh, let's see, landing lights, navs. Okay, good. So I did the taxi light. That's what I was working on. Okay, taxi light. Now we need landing. So generally, a landing would be in here. Um. Can't really do it with these fours, so you they have to have just uh landing lights stick underneath is probably what I'll do. The other thought I had was doing tip landing lights. Um trying to decide what I want to do here. Let's see. Let's see if I like this. I might loathe this with a passion. Um I can't do a big light and cover it like that I don't think yeah I don't think I could do that let's just do drop down lights let's not over complicate this and cause problems so could make them snazzy let's get a vote snazzy or not snazzy Do you guys think I should make these landing lights snazzy or not snazzy? I cut out some fuel if I make them snazzy, but that's not the end of the world either. Not that much fuel. I'd, yeah, I'm going to cut that there. Not snazz. Okay. We'll go with not snazz for now. I can always snazz them up later. And then I need to just check the blooms on these. So you want them nice and wide like that. Um, that way they're not banging you in the cockpit windows because they'll shine in the back of the windows and blind you. Uh, and then we have the center light in the middle. Uh, generally, let's see, taxi light, let's go. Oh, I don't know. Uh, we'll do a step up here. And then these uh, will go pretty high intensity on those. Let's go ahead and plug these and do a quick light check. Landing light goes here. So what I was going to do for SNAZ, which I still might do, I think the DC-9 had SNAZ. <laughs> the passengers haven't earned it. They haven't. Um, oh, now I want SNAZ. Can I SNAZ out the ends, the tips? Yeah, I'm going to snazz it up. Okay. It's been decided. Snazzy, wazzy is the way. Okay. So these have all these wedges in here to give me um, fuel capacity. Okay, that's there. Got to cut out this here. Okay. I'm going to snazz them up. Got a feeling that I need to snazz them. There we go. All right. And let's see. I'm trying to think where I want to end this. Let's do it here. This will cause the least amount of ruckus, I think. Good item in the fuel tanks, too, but I don't want to rip the whole wing apart to do this. Okay. Please be symmetry on. Symmetry's on. Thank you. Uh, Okay, so these need to be out and then retract to where they retract. And where's the retraction portion here? And I figure out the geometry. So I'll suck this bay here. Right there. Okay, nice. All right, good. Um,
Can I wedge this is the question? Might be able to put a wedge in there. See if it has a collision issue or not. Okay, and then what do I need to reseal you fuel tank? You need... That would be too easy, I think. So you are... Okay, so you just need to be deleted here. And you need to be squared off. This is essentially what's going on here. So put a square in there. That should seal my fuel tanks back up. Yarp. Okay, that's all sealed up now. All right, so those are going to be retracted. I think the DC-9 had retracts on them. If memory serves, they were cool. Uh, let's see. Do I have a spot on the gear panel? They're going to go with the gear. They could go lights. But I think they're going to come down with the gear. Do I have a space in here? So, yeah. Um, crap. Uh, if I invert it... No, that will work. Um, it just go right off the gear signal. Okay, that, that works. Let's go ahead where I'm sending the gear out, and let's try sending to these. And, uh, yeah. See if they go the right way. I just pulled the jack stands off, too. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I don't want them on landing lights because you wouldn't want you don't want to bang the light out and hit the ground like that. You want to have them come out first. All right, let's uh, hit them with the uh, see if this works. So the other thing I want to check is when I get in here, check my fuel, make sure I didn't lose any fuel. That means my tanks are still sealed. If I have no fuel, my fuel's good. Go ahead and bang up the gear. And those lights tuck away, so the wedges are blocking them. So the wedges have to come out, which isn't a big deal. I don't need the wedges in there. They were just a thought, but um, they don't need to be in there. So let's go you, and then all right. So that's where the those live. And let's go through here. Uh, chat, chat. Yeah, it depends on the speeds. You know, you don't really need, you know, you start going high speed, you know, any drag you can kill is helpful. Um, slow speeds, you know, one thing a lot of people don't consider is insurance. Um, there was a big change, like, you know, for complex aircraft, they have retractable landing gear. And, um, like, I wanted to buy a Mooney, and it has retractable landing gear. It's it, it's insane trying to insure it because the insurance companies are afraid you're going to land with gear up. And because they're afraid of gear up landings, they, insurance is very expensive for, um, even with my experience, to get a an airplane with retractable landing gear because if you land with a gear up you're most likely going to hit the prop on the ground and have to overhaul the engine, which could be 20 grand if you, you know, just because you forgot to put the gear up and that's the minimum. So you're talking probably 40, 50 grand. You could easily have to total the airplane because you landed with the gear up. So there's a big movement away. So even like Lance Airs and Cirrus and some fast, you know, personal type airplanes, they, uh, people started going, um, fixed gear just to save um, insurance costs. All right, so those are really cool. I like those snazzy lights. I'm glad I want snaz. You see, they come down. Now the lights are in place. The other thing I can do is, actually, this is awesome. Uh, let me see. I'd have to change the value on this, but we'll have to see where the lights hit. Let's do a light test. If the lights hit the don't hit the ground, I can also angle these so they don't... So normally landing lights actually aim down towards the ground a little bit. So... I did. I went snazzy. You should see the lights in my uh, frog foot. Let's go ahead and save this. I'll show you the lights on the frog foot. Frog foot had these lights in them. I had to do them. So let's see. These, Yeah, these are the lights in the frog foot. So they angle down to the runway, and then they suck up into the, uh, into the nacelles there. So as you're coming in, your your nose is pitched up more, so those are hitting the runway. So that's that's what I kind of meant if I need to angle them. So I might go back and angle these here. But uh, let's do a test. Let's do a light test. Uh, logo lights I'm missing. So let's do let's finish up the lights. Try not to get distracted. But 
keep distracting myself with snaz. Logos, landing lights need to be plugged back in. Okay. And then logo needs to come in. I don't know how I'm going to do logo. Um, they're just going to have to be downlit, I think. I usually like to up light, but I'm going to have to probably downlight. Whatever. Yeah, it's just so so super simple to uh, downlight the logo on this one. Right there. And then uh, actually probably out one. I'd say maybe, th nope, they can't go there. Let's try it right here. So that, let's try that for logo lights. And then let's do a quick light check here and see what everything looks like. That's the nice thing about T-Tail, it's easy to light the logo. Yes, I will show you the fuel filling valve blue. You'll probably like it. A single point refueling as all should be. We have diesel for the diesel APU, which I wish was a jet fuel APU. Uh, we have our ground power uh, fuel gauges, which I haven't connected yet, GPU volts and bat, and then that's our um, that's our jet fuel. That's back there. Uh, let's do a light check. Check, check, check. All right. Hello, darkness, my old friend. All right. And so we used to come in the airplane. It was completely dark. And there was one button that was lit. And that was your battery connect. That was the only button light in the whole airplane that was lit if you open the door you got a tiny little like indicator light there which i will have and then you came in with your flashlight there's a flashlight that plugged in right here by the front entry door and then you come in you click battery power connect all the lights would come on and then you'd select ground power or you or you'd first actually do your fire test light up the apu and that's how you get moving so let's jump in here and so beacon Nothing. <laughs> it suck. Nothing. What the hell? Why is no beacon? Input electricity is on, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Beacon's out for some reason. Copy. Oh, I didn't renumber them. That's why. I didn't probably connect it. I didn't renumber them. They need to be renumbered. Uh, let's check them. Let's see. Uh, where are you at here? There's lights. Yeah, I didn't renumber them. That's all it is. Okay. Let's check what numbers I'm running here. So that should be um, so 19, 20, 23, 24. Let's see, 19, 20. Okay, so they're all bottom row. That's all I need to know. Okay, 19, all bottom row. Copy. I didn't re renumber them. That's why they're all screwy. So, Beacon, you are 19. Nav, where are you? 20. Twenty three is going to be Logo. Taxi is going to be 24. And I got a feeling something's uh, strobes. I missed strobes. Nav is 20. Strobes is 21. I knew I was missing one. 21 is strobes. Lo let's see. Nope. 19, 20. 21, 22, 23 is strobes. 24 is logo. 27 and 28 is going to be um, 27 and 28. All right, that would be why the lights didn't work, was I, uh, I'm using a different panel, and I didn't renumerate them. Ugh, that light's terrible, terribly bright. Wish we could dim that sucker. All right. Just light them all up here. Missing some lights are definitely not on. What's going on here? 
All right, something else is up. Let's check it out. All right, so composite. Make sure I have the right composite going in here. So this panel here is daisied here to here to here to there to there. And then you daisy off of here because it all goes to fire test. Fire test comes out. That should be the right signal. That's the right one. Why the hell is it not working? What the hell? Um, make sure they're all connected. Land strobes are connected to strobes. Beacon, beacon. Taxi, taxi. Logos, landings, or navs, and then landing lights. What the hell? Uh, you merged? Oh, you're not merged. I'll do it. You like that? They're going to stay on the roof. <laughs> Is that what you meant with neat arrangement? Yeah. Let's see. All right. Uh, let's bang them on. Beacon. Hey, look at that. We have a beacon. Beautiful. All right. Let's go ahead and let's bang on nav lights. I didn't color the nav lights, so they're not going to be colored as... Want to know if they're on? They're on. Copy. Strobs. We got strobs. We have strobs. All right, I need to figure out that white uh, rear light. Strobs are on. Let's see. Logo. Logo. I need. It. Holy! What the hell? Ugh. That's brutal. That's brutal. That needs to be turned. I think I go black color on that one. Taxi. All right, let's uh, steer with the taxi light. And taxi light steers with us. Very nice. So it works as our turnoff light. Uh, landings. And so let's see our cone. Look at that. We got a nice triple cone on there. See how the cones don't hit me in the cockpit? That's important. I don't want to be hit in the cockpit with those lights. That's why they're so far out. All right, let's go ahead and tame that logo light. It's white, that's why it should be all the way as, probably as dark as I can get it. And then I think I want to tip those landings down, but let's go for a little flight, and then I'm probably going to have to go to bed, unfortunately. Generally, I stay up all night, but um, it is Christmas, and people expect me to do things tomorrow. Any light? Okay. So that is a completely blacked out um, logo. Uh, let's see. If I move it in one, it will paint the tail more. I can't get any dark in that, unfortunately. What did I ask Santa for Christmas? Nothing. I buy all my own presents. I, you know, I certainly, uh, people get me nice gifts. I certainly appreciate them, but, uh, I buy myself big presents. <laughs> so I was going to get a motorcycle, but my back's screwed up again at the moment. So I'm, uh, Gonna hold off on an, an additional motorcycle. I wanted to get a third motorcycle, so the uh, my second motor, my first motorcycle is uh, I need to. F it's it's like twenty years old. I need to fix it up. So yeah, I like I like getting socks. Socks are nice. People uh, people rag on socks, but there's nothing wrong with socks. All right, let's see if I can't tame this freaking logo light. That's that is completely one hundred percent dark on that logo light. I think of there's a way to tame it. Um, I don't want to light up the interior. Um, that was one of the things. You know, when you're flying, it's not a big deal. Um, let's do this too. Um, let's highlight this. Cut this. Push this in one. Um, that way I can move where my logo sits. All right, those are as dark as I can get them, too. So I wonder, if I get in here with the black and go to zeros, is the zero black darker? I bet it is. Okay, let's go zero black on that. That's as dark as I can probably get it. Let's see what that logo light looks like now. 
I didn't realize that the st stock black wasn't 100% zeroed, so let's try it now. Oh, we got logo light. Okay, perfect. Zero black is proper zero black. I forgot about that. I probably knew that at some point and forgot. Let's go uh, two, 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 two. Let's try that. Nope, I didn't. I didn't actually do anything. I just changed the color and never applied. Let's go to five. Uh, what does it start on? Let's try that. Twenty. Let's go to five. Okay. Freaking dark as hell, man. Yeah, it's, uh, what is it? Let's see. Yeah, triple, all zeros black. It, that doesn't show anything. So I'm up to fives now. It starts at 20. So I got to see what, uh, we'll see if five is too bright or too dim. Yeah, five's nothing. I'm getting nothing off five. Or let, did I color it? So five. Let's go to tens. See what 10 looks like. All right, let's try. I don't know if can't remember if I colored black or not. Let's try tens and see what that looks like. I can't. I'm not looking at chat for the second. I'll look in a sec. Oh my god! I wish I could color my own flashlight. Though I need to get an interior light in here just so I'm not blinding myself. Uh, landing light? No. Logo light. Logo light. Logo light. There we go. Look at that. Looking pretty good. It's a little bit, you get that sparkly nonsense, but uh, that's not bad there. Let's uh, read chat real quick. Yeah, there's never enough motorcycles. Yeah, it's uh, it's 2020 20, 20 blue. Yeah, so it's, that's five. Five doesn't look too bad. I It's doing this flickery nonsense, but as long as it doesn't screw with the game, I don't mind it. So let's see. Uh, let's, yeah, 10, 10 was pretty good. This is 10s. Let's go up a little bit. Uh, I just want that flickering to go away. I'm afraid that's going to cause me issues. Like, I play mostly by myself, but, um, you know, I want to make sure that it runs all right. So let's go 15s. See what 15s look like. I just want to get rid of that flicker. It could be because they're so close now, but. Try 15s. 10s were good, though, so I'm happy with 10s. Maybe even 5s. I'll try 5s again. I don't think I painted the 5s. I'm not going to light my flashlight off. I'm going to try to find this light in the dark here, this door in the dark, because I can't can't do it again. Can't keep looking at that. Bright lights drive me nuts. Uh, let's see. Logo light. <laughs> That's good there. Um that is 15. That's not bad there. Let me move them off a, a block again and see if um, that flickering stops. I think it's too close, maybe. Let's try this. See if that flickering goes. It's not a big deal, I don't think, but I'd rather if it didn't flicker like that. It's funny how many things you learn in this game and then you forget. Like I, I think I had known at one point to, to decrease my black, my dark, my black even darker, and completely forget. I'm gonna quickly do the light and close my eyes. All right. Oh, I hate it so much. It's so bright. It's, it's it really is truly brutal. Lo oh, come on, give me logo. There we go. You see the volcano out there? It looks like Mordor. There we go. No flicker. That's I'm digging that. I'm gonna down it though to ten. We we'll go to five. Screw it. Five. It's this detailing stuff that you could do for a thousand years is start uh, realizing that uh, could be a little bit dimmer, could be a little bit brighter, and then you look and it's like six hours later and you're like what have i done i've changed the color of one light so people uh, yeah you get new people who play in the game and they're like oh i worked on this build for 20 hours and you're like 20 hours i have worked on just getting the just getting the, the turbine to work exactly the way i want it for 20 hours there we go that's beautiful
All right, so that's good. That's nice. That's good logo light. I should be able to get a logo and a tail number in there. Um, it doesn't have to be big. Let me see what else we got here. Five did something blue. It, I forgot to color it. So I changed it to five, and then I don't think I ever pressed pressed on the lights to change the color. No, I'm, I'm uh, it's, what is it, three in the morning? I'm going, uh, I got all sorts of stuff planned tomorrow. I'm doing all sorts of family stuff. I did family stuff today. I do some more family stuff tomorrow. I just, uh, I, I'm usually up at night, so I, I try not to screw my sleep up by getting up at weird hours. So kind of keep it the same, whether I'm doing something or not. All right, so the lights are done. That's done. Um, let's do a quick flight. I want to see what the landing lights look like, if I need to tip them down or not. Yeah. Get in there. Um, oh, Jesus Christ. That's brutal, man. That really is brutal. Now, I have no cockpit lights, which isn't helpful. I'm going to work on those in a little bit. But All right. Uh, let's see. My fakey start for the moment. All right, flaps are coming to nine degrees. Nine. Taxi out. See how she looks on the taxi with lights. I don't like it. So I might need, like I said, tip those landing lights down just a little bit. We'll see as we take off uh, or as we land. We'll do a quick pattern, and then I'll probably go to bed. Oh, you know what? I did connect the brake, I think. Did I connect the brake? I did. Connect the parking brake, so I'm running with the parking brake on. I can't see if that's on or not. I put the parking brake on and forgot that I connected. For a while there, I had no brake. Ah, crap. Don't crash, you ding-dong. I was trying to taxi with the parking brake on. I was all spooled up. All right, here we go. I had the thrust reversals on. <laughs> Eighty knots, V one, rotate, pause the rate, gears coming up. Nope. When you click the right button there, ding dong, where is it? Now watch them. They're in the wells. And you see those are now stowed, so those should also go off when they're stowed. Um, I'm not gonna screw with it right now. So now, so this is the new thing I've been doing. This works much better. I use a tilt sensor, so. The tilt sensor is doing my yaw, and I, I gauge it by my own experience of how much. Because when you're flying a jet like this, you keep your feet flat on the floor. You don't need to do any rudder when you're uh, turning. You click the yaw damper on. You don't do any sort of rudder. You just uh, feet flat on the floor. Let's go ahead and, oh, my God, if I could see what I'm doing here. So we're going to go full flaps. I need to hook the spoilers up uh, so the spoilers will come on. You know, whatever the distance sensor is, plus probably a meter, of the spoilers will come on. And then the, um, as long as you're over 20 knots. So that way the spoilers come on when you land. That's how they worked in the Embraer. Like a lot of planes, like a lot of Boeing, you have to arm the spoilers. We didn't have to arm the spoilers. They were autoed. All right, so. Oh, I'm, lo I'm going for this. Where the hell am I here? I... There's a good chance I crashed trying to figure out what the hell I'm doing here. I'm trying to put a waypoint. I was... Oh, I'm going to crash. Crap. I was trying to... I was looking at the wrong waypoint, and then I was trying to go to my map to do it. I should have put the autopilot on, but... Um, we're going to do this fast. I'm going to bang it fast around. I'm not going to put the gear up. I'm going to leave everything down and out and dirty. Where you at? Where you at? Where, you at? Where am I in this thing? There we go. Freaking light. I need to put interior lights in this or I'm going to go insane. I should just turn the here. Do this until I get started. There we go. Oh, my eyes are killing me. All right. Nine. All right. Parking brake is actually working now. Let's release that. That red light will come on, or the it's an amber light will come on when the uh, brakes are on. So.
Yeah, it would be nice. To, one thing I would like to have on the map is um, the ability to, like, drag a line kind of like DCS has from where you are to where you want to go and have it show you the compass heading. That's what I would like. Let me try to catch up on shit. All right, let me uh, bang a takeoff here. Flaps are set. Did I set the flaps? Flaps set. Okay. Let's go. Eighty knots. V one. Rotate. Positive rate. We'll leave the gear down. I'm gonna get on final, and then I'm gonna worry about that. I, I'm gonna do it again. Make sure the waypoints there. All right. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna quickly throw some flap in. Do full flaps. So you do need to trim in this game, just like you would in real life as you're adding flaps. So flaps should be at 40. They're actually at 45. I have a I have a see like I have 20, 36% trim in there. That's how you'd really be doing it. Your trim's constantly going the whole time you're flying. You notice I'm not climbing very fast, that's because of all that drag I have. See my deck angle? That's one of the reasons you're adding flaps is to keep a higher deck angle as well. So my spoilers are very effective. If I put up my spoilers, I can descend at like 11,000 feet per minute, no problem. So I'm doing no yaw. It's auto yawing me because in real life, you don't have to yaw. So it um, it's all based on the tilt sensor. So the more tilt I get, the faster I should be turning. So the plane's automatically doing it for me. Trying to see if I can, I'm trying to visually spot this. I want a good approach here. The problem is that waypoint also gets in the way too, so I can't see, so I need to then clear it. So I could have clicked on the autopilot, but I didn't want to. All right, let's go ahead and bang the lights off here. It'll actually be easier to find the airport. In real life, the way you find the airport is it's always the dark spot. You know, you think all these lights at the airport should be lit up like a Christmas tree. Unless you're aligned with the runway, you can't see the lights because they have cones around them so that, you know, you don't accidentally line up for a taxiway or something, thinking it's the runway. So you actually aim for the dark spot in the middle of a city, and that's usually the airport. And then once you get on final, you can see it. Okay, there it is. Friggin' hell. They don't come on till late, do they? All right, so I'm just going to do a low pass, and then I'll come loop around and see where... Uh, so I'm trying to see what my landing lights are going to hit here. So let's look. The landing lights are on. So they probably need to be angled down a little. Like, see, they're not hitting the ground yet. They are starting to hit the ground now. So they should be aimed pretty low. Yeah, see, they're, they're too high. So what am I at now? Let's check my deck angle. So I am presently at... I don't think that's exactly right, but let's say 10 degrees... So I probably want negative like five. All right, let's go ahead and try to bang a landing. And I'm going to go to the other airport. That uh, should be quick to get to here. Now I'll just loop this one. I can see this one. I'm not going to bother with the other one. I'll just do it at 126 knots here. Just crank it around. I'm just going to crank. Get it in there. Yeah, I think that you can set in um, options view distance. I think that's fog of war. I'm not sure. I haven't screwed with it. I changed my field of view too. I like I normally run a really high field of view, and I haven't in this game yet. And that makes it a lot like you can have a realistic distance from the panels if you. Um, yeah, you know, there's no fog on. Uh, it's just ambient. Uh, you can have a realistic field of view. Uh, you can have a realistic um, distance from the panels if you uh, change your field of view to a more realistic, like what a human sees. All right, so we're looking for the landing lights. That's what I'm looking for. So they definitely need to be angled down. I'll come up with something for them. So... Yeah, I still don't see them at all. I'm trying to see them. Okay, see how they knock in right now? That's late. So they need to come in a lot earlier than that. Now we'll go in thrust reversers coming open. There are buckets. Buckets are open. 
Go ahead and we'll close the buckets. Buckets are closed. The logo lights looking good. Um, those are looking, let's go ahead and, and I need to change these. So these need their own angle, that's fine. Apparently I hit the caps lock button. All right, let's see. Um, so what do I want on this? So this, I need to put on, that's for my safety, for my uh, gear so that I can't raise them while I'm on the ground. Let's see, what do I want? So, um, I need about 45. No, 45 is too much. Let me see. I need about down, maybe, I don't know, 10 degrees, most at 5, 10 down. So let's see. So probably need to knock off. So if a full one value is all the way out, I want to knock off like, I don't know, I'm trying to think 5 degrees. So it'd be. Let's try like a. I'll go look at them first, but let's try like a point. Uh, let's try a point nine, see if that looks all right. Should be able to check them out pretty easy here. What is going on? Why can't I see anything? Uh, let's go. Don't need it to be night for this. What are you running at? Okay. No, oh, it's backwards. All right. All right. So that's what it is. Um, I know what I'm doing now. Okay. Let's see where you at there, guy. I did it backwards. All right. So that needs to be one. This needs to be my other value. All right. This will do point. I don't know. Let's do, I don't know, point 0.2 maybe. Let's try that. See if that floats my boat. Kind of just visually want to see what it looks like. And then I'll do it. I got a, I got a way to do a test here. There we go. Let's do the aim down now. So that should be about probably close. Maybe a 1, maybe a point 0.1. What's the intensity? These should be max intensity. So let's check this. These are all maxed. Make sure these are maxing out here. Okay, make those brighter. Those should be max intensity. This one here can be, don't need a taxi light to be max intensity. Let's go like that. Let's test it out. And then I'm gonna go to bed. I thank you guys for watching, though. It was fun hanging out. Hope everybody has a good holiday. Let's see. Uh, what, what am I doing here? Clicking the wrong buttons. So that's brighter, and we're getting that low angle on them. I think that should help out. Let's do something really quick, uh, and then I'll call it. We'll. Uh, I'm just going to take off. On a rotation, I should be able to see what uh, it looks like. I catch up on chat as we're doing this. Here's my park brake. So check it on the way out, see what it looks like. So I have trim still in there from before. Um, so what we do in real life is you'd actually have a trim setting. You have a trim gauge, which I think I'll, I'm going to put a trim gauge on the, on the panel, the main panel. Um, but uh, you would set your, your takeoff trim and then that's, uh, has it 
pre-trimmed for takeoff so that it's easier for the nose to come off, and then as soon as you get in the air, you retrim. That way you're not trying to peel it off the runway. It's just kind of coming up. You know, it's very light pressure. You don't have to pull hard because that's how you hit the tail. So what I, I think I had is something set. I think I had like 20 was my takeoff trim. Am I, am I bringing parking brakes on? I think my parking brakes are on. I can't see. Yep, parking brakes are on. Now it's going to take off like a, a banshee here. Okay, so that right there. Let's get a let's get an approach in just on the land and try to see what it looks like. So that's that's actually tipped down more than I thought I was going to have to have it. I can't really see the definition of the land for crap here. Trying to get it close here. To have that that trim set in there for takeoff. Let's go ahead and see. Try not to bang the ground here as I check it here. When can I see this ground? That's the question. Okay, so that's coming in. That's not great, but it's not bad either. Trying to see. So I just think the range on them isn't going to be great, but I could still see the land fine. So they could come up a bit. I definitely think they need to come up. So, all right, that's the last test. I'm going to go to a point one or point oh five, I think. Probably a point one, I'm thinking. And that should be good for that. And then, you know, as I fly it more, if it's still not hitting it, I can go a little bit above or below. Go ahead and change that to point one. All right, good. Let's update this. Let's save the sucker. Uh, cap air, no touchies, not getting touchied. All right, so thank you guys for watching. I'm going to call it there. i got to go to bed, and I will back up all my, all my vehicle files. I highly recommend that. And I'll see you guys later. Thanks.